What's going on, everybody? Yes, yes, we are back. The men without the masks. We are back. It is Monday, August the 2nd, 2021, 6.04 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I'm spitting shit out of my mouth or something. This is episode uh, 120 of Two Dudes and Some Bullshit. My name is Dave McRae, coming to you live from the Voice Man Studios in Toronto, Canada. He's Tony Michael in Atlanta, Georgia. And tonight, we are watching the 1993 classic, Jason Goes to Hell. Ladies and gentlemen, we are live! That's right, I said classic. A classic piece of shit! <laughs> well, it all depends on what you think. Maybe you like it, maybe you don't like it. I don't know. 120th episode, ladies and gentlemen. Friday the 13th, part 9. Of course, they couldn't use the Friday the 13th name because of, uh, uh, well, because it had gone away from Paramount over to New Line, I think, or the other way around. No, 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 it had gone from Paramount to New Line. They couldn't use the Friday the 13th name, so that's why it's called Jason Goes to Hell the Final Friday instead. Tony Michael looking stylish. I I love the hat, the glasses, the combination of the Jason hoodie. How you doing? I break the glasses out every now and then. I got these just before you got yours. Uh, I just don't like wearing them too often, but the contacts are just like scratching my eyes today. I'm like, yeah, I'm over that. Uh, I understand. I'm good. I'm good. Uh, yeah, the hat, uh, it's one of these like 1920s, 1900, early 1900 style uh, caps, which I like. Uh, I haven't had a chance to shave the head, so I'm like, all right, I got the stubblies coming in, and I don't like that look either. So, yeah. Well, and, like, it's, the, it's, the hoodie I got from H&M, the Jason hoodie. Was oh, got, really? Like, yeah, Jason takes Manhattan. They, they well, have this I might hat. have to drop into H&M tomorrow and pick well, up that fucking I got hoodie. it last October. Um, they had a oh, few. Okay. Um, they had this. They had uh, the newer it. That's where I got um, the one that says uh, "loser lover." Uh, you've seen me more than yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, it's like so. Like every October, H and M, you gotta you gotta keep an eye out for it. They they do this every October, and then it's gone. Um, they release some pretty cool like horror sweaters. Um, and I'm not like the biggest fan of take Manhattan, but I thought it was really cool. Cause it's Jason looking through the subway. Yeah. Uh, it's cool. Yeah. And the hat I got from H and M as well too. H and M does really good on the hats. Like I, I like that you know, hat. The other hats that I've, I've worn a couple of them are from H and M and I've had a couple of custom made, but, uh, it's like hit or miss with hats with me. Sometimes I like them. Sometimes I don't. Yeah. Um, Brian Johnson wears that kind of a hat lead singer of ACDC. Yes, you know, uh, his is a little bit more thinner. If you it's actually thinner, thought but in person, it's a little thicker. It is. That's true. You know, um, but yeah, I know. Yeah, he. That's one of his icon. Well, along with what's his name with the schoolboy outfit look. That's right. Uh, yeah, Angus Young. Angus. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> so. um, look, before we begin tonight, uh, I just want. I did. Uh, uh, you may notice uh, if you're just uh, tuning in. You, uh, I made a pin post at the at the top of this uh, of the chat room. Um, what I have done and and will be doing uh, for the time being is uh, in order to uh, chat in the chat room, not watch, you can watch without being a subscriber, but in order to chat and partake in the chat room, uh, you will have to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Now, that is not me trying to gain more subscribers. That's me just trying to deter the unnecessary uh, men with small penises. Uh, you know, i.e. trolls. Um, and it's not going to get rid of them. I mean, it's it's not going to get rid of uh, trolls. But but what happens is, is that uh, once a troll is booted out, uh, they just think to themselves, well, I'll just make another account and subscribe. And that's fine. But you have to wait 10 minutes before you can chat again. And I can change that to having to wait fucking five weeks if I wanted to. So uh, if you want to have an opportunity to chat, uh, in the chat room, make sure you are already subscribed. And if you are a troll, welcome. But if you troll, you'll get booted. And if you don't have another account, if you make another account, well, you'll have to wait 10 minutes. And remember, I can always increase that to 20 minutes, to 30 minutes, to a day, to two days. Hey, make them wait a day. You know what I mean? A hundred percent. A day. It's going to be a day. You're going to make a day. Okay. All right. You get small penises. Only trolls get small penises. Okay. Melania. Yes. Who's got the small penises? The trolls, Donald. The trolls. That's right. Trolls get small penises, okay? Uh, <laughs> the smallest penis. The the tiniest penis, okay? Like my little hands. Like my little hands. Um, 
but yeah, so again, it's not, it's not a, it's, it's, it's not a, a foolproof thing and, 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 you know, trolls going to troll, but, um, usually trolls do not, uh, you know, when they have a bunch of accounts, it's, it's, it's very easy for them to just create something and then just keep going. So, uh, if you want to partake in the chat, please subscribe to the channel, uh, and you'll be able to do that. Uh, and then we'll see how this goes. And this will be a thing even for my McRae live shows as well. Uh, but like I said, keep in mind, I can, you know, I can change it from 10 minutes to, to a day if I wanted to. Okay. So just remember that. Anyway, uh, Tony and I are paused three seconds in the new line cinema logo is just about to come up onto the screen. Tony, that's where you're paused, right? Okay. Yeah. You know what I watched the other night on Saturday movie night for my patrons? Fright Night. That's good. Welcome to Fright Night. Yeah, it is. It's such a great movie. This um, one helped. <laughs> this, yeah. Now, Tony, look, this is the greatest cinematic achievement in horror history. We are about to watch the greatest. Well, I, I, I will say it has the greatest cinematic cameo of all time. I mean, the absolute greatest. Now, we are all familiar with The Man of a Thousand Faces, Lon Chaney. Great movie, by the way, with James Cagney. Mm -hmm. I've never seen that. It's based on Lon Chaney. Seen mm -hmm. it, not just seen it. Man of a Thousand Faces. We all know who that is. This mm -hmm. is The Man of a Thousand Pieces and the greatest cameo ever. And when Jason explodes in the body parts, that is Tony Moran. <laughs> That's right. That's right. That's right. Cameo ever. <laughs> that's right. That's right. That's that's the only thing I don't like about the uh, Freddy Krueger cameo at the end when his hand comes up and takes the mask down. And I believe that's actually Kane Hodder's hand. That's actually Kane Hodder uh, pretending to be Freddy. Yeah, I loved that as kids when we saw this. That was the only thing we loved and talked about after the movie. It was like, it's so cool seeing Freddy take the hand down. But of course, we were kids when we saw this. Oh, it was but. cool. It, it was absolutely. The only thing I didn't like was the blades. You can kind of see the blades bending a bit. It, like it, it almost looks like it's plastic or very, very, very flimsy metal or something. It just looked sort of, I, I didn't, it didn't look strong enough to me. It just looked very sort of, I gotta admit, it looks like a wimpy grab. Uh, no offense to Kane. I, I mean, you know, you know, he's a big dude, and and you know, I wouldn't want to meet him in a dark alley. But but the fact of the matter is, is that it just the way the blades kind of, I don't know. Well, you'll see when we see it. It's just kind of like eh, I would have been like, cut. Let's do it again. That would have been me though. Uh, I don't know if I would have yelled at that 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 loud. Um, so, yeah, and this is uh, 1993. Sean S. Cunningham returned to produce this pile of crap. And <laughs> yes. Oh, yeah, yeah. This is an awful movie. But let's, uh, we're going to watch it. Uh, yeah, let's start it. And I can tell you in a second. Oh, well, well, there is a, oh, okay, okay, all right. So you want to start it and then you'll. It's a quickie. It's nothing major. It's, it's a what? It's a quickie. Nothing major. Go ahead. Oh, okay. All right. Please. All right. Are, are you ready to start then? All right, here we go. Uh, pause. Three seconds in. I'm watching. Oh, and by the way, I'm assuming this is this just the theatrical cut. I'm just watching it off YouTube. <laughs> so I'm assuming that's it. I mean, I hear there's like a, a director's cut or an unrated cut or something. I, I don't know. I, I don't assume that's this. This is just the cut that is on YouTube. Uh, I wouldn't. I cannot even imagine bothering to watch an unrated cut of Jason Goes to Hell gives a shit here we go we're paused three seconds in five four three two and one no i was just gonna say unfortunately for me mm. and like you and most people who are around our age my theater going experience for the big core three freddie michael and jason yes my my first nightmare on elm street movie was uh freddie's dead that's the first one i saw in theaters Jason Goes to Hell was the first Friday the 13th movie that I saw in theaters. And Halloween Curse of Michael Myers was the first. That's now, amazing. I will say um, I had a good time with my buddies seeing Freddy's Dead and Jason Goes. Probably a little bit more so with Jason Goes to Hell. We had a lot of fun. That was more of a theater going experience than actually enjoying the movies. It was just really cool because uh, we snuck my brother in because the kid who was old. I don't know if it was the same way in Toronto um, growing up for you, but like in the States. Uh, as a teenager, you could be accompanied by someone who's at least 18 and they can get you into an R-rated movie. Yep, same. Yep. You had to be a teenager. That's right. 
my brother wasn't. So we snuck him in to see Freddy's Dead and Jason Goes to Hell. Um, my buddy was old enough to get us all in. Mm. Uh, and we, we, we snuck in a couple other people as well, too. And I just remember those two movies. It was just fun. It was fun hanging out with friends, watching mm. the film. Uh, Halloween, forget. I think because Halloween of the three, that I was anticipating the most and excited for the most. And, and I've shared that story many times where it was pre-internet and I had no yeah. fucking no clue that Danielle Harris was not in the movie. Yes. And when I'm watching this, I'm like, wait, what the fuck is going on here? And Allie, the girl that I went with, she, she was great. She got me through the night. Uh, but this one, I, I had fun. And I just remember me and my buddies were like, dude, that was so awesome seeing Freddie's hand come up at the end and shit. Like, now in hindsight, as an adult, my eyes are seeing it differently. But as a teenager, I don't know. Did you like the movie at all? Like, no. Or, no, I thought it was crap. No, I thought it was absolute crap. I, I didn't see this in the theater. I saw it on VHS. And I was excited because I remember the marketing campaign around this film was something to the effect of the creators of the original have come back to bring you yeah. the last one. You know what I mean? It's something dumb like that. And the only redeeming quality, I mean, in 1993, we were 14. I thought this girl here at the beginning was hot. Oh, and, yeah. And, and she is. She is very... Um, Attractive. So, so I remember thinking as a 14 year old boy being like, Oh, hello there, <laughs> you know? And, and then of course there's the scene where she gets into the shower and, and, uh, and then, and I was excited because I thought the whole movie was going to follow this girl. You know what I mean? And I was kind of like, you know, if the whole, cause I don't think it does at all. I think she's in the opening here and that's it. I don't, I don't think she's in the whole movie. One and done. She's done. Yeah, exactly. So I was very disappointed as a 14 year old boy. And then, you know, when you go along and the rest of the film is like, it's just, it's this, I didn't, the whole idea that he's dead, but you can eat him and then he goes into your, it's just, it's so, it's so far. Like if, if, if Jason takes Manhattan is jumping the shark, this is jumping the moon. I mean, it just, I didn't, it's Jumpings. not, it's not for me. It's so completely different from, from anything. It's just, it's it, creatively. It it's, it's, I just like the story. I don't like the direction. I think it's silly. It's silly. It's it comical. Sean and be like, listen, bro, look at the first two films that you created. And you mean to tell me this is your denouement of this franchise? This. Yeah, it's just look terrible. Look at the first two. How do you get that Jason can jump from yeah. body to body? You know what I mean? I, I've always made the argument that in the first two films, that I, I've concluded in my own mind that Jason never drowned, that Mrs. Voorhees lied wait, about Wait, wait, wait. Here she is. She's taking off her stuff. <laughs> I'm out. Hold on. Time <laughs> out. Time out. She's getting into the... Redeeming now, factors. is this... Well, it, it really... Do, well, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it, really it looks is. like her. I was going to say, is this a body double? But no, that, that definitely looks like her. Um, I love how though with the set design they have like the tub with the rust and everything there. That that's great, and uh, she's getting side. into the, well, and she yeah side boob. She's getting into the uh, into the shower right now, and she's an FBI agent, I think, right? Friday Thirteenth movie. You always that is the formula. Naked girl. Yep. Oh, there we go. More than just a side boob there. But this is like, you know, again, I was like, I you know, I was into it. I'm I'm 14. I'm like, oh, geez, you know, that's kind of cool. This girl and you know and everything and and uh, and she's an FBI agent I think right there to lure Jason out into the it's so so crappy it's so crap and and it completely and, and it complete like there's no the fact that his mask is now like embedded into his skin yet and shit <laughs> well that would be cool if it was supposed to be the same mask through the entire series but his mask from the entire series broke apart in in part seven yeah. And he got and then, a new mask at the beginning of part eight. Ooh, there he is. But I mean, you know, like the, he's he looks. Wearing like, what kind of outfit he's wearing? He's wearing like a gray button up shirt. With, like he looks like a pissed off garage mechanic. He does. <laughs> Look at that light coming through. Like, what well, the no, fuck? I think Michael with the jumpsuit, but he looks like more of like a pissed off exterminator. There he looks like almost what you would... Ex yeah, he a pissed off exterminator. <laughs> well, because Michael would be more the garage guy with the jumpsuit. This more looks like a plumber or an exterminator. <laughs> right, right. I got you. I don't know. Just, uh, but anyways, but like I was saying, like, you know, I've just... I've concluded to the fact that if you look at the origins of the first two films, 
you know, you can argue that Jason, if, if you go with Jason being a human, he never drowned. Mrs. Voorhees was just pissed the fuck off that, he, you know, he was neglected and, you know, totally, you know, not looked upon by the camp counselor. So she went on this fucking killing spree for fucking two decades, right? Because if you go back to 58, 59, yeah. all the shit happened there. Um, and then what happens in the first film? And then you get Jason in, you yeah. know, in part two, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I, I just don't believe a dude can drown and then come back unless you, you're going to put him in the <laughs> this, Why did she have I'm to do fuck. You're gonna why like, did she have to, but why did we she, all look at her like what? Why did she have to do a somersault there? It was great. She just said, look, <laughs> the FBI the FBI now, is coming out of the bomb, fucking trees. The bomb blowing up behind Jason and before Jason goes into a million pieces played yeah, by yeah. Tony. Uh, it's a cool shot. I mean, it really, it does look cool, but that really should have been the fucking ending. Yeah, yeah, that should have been the ending of the movie. Here it is. They're going to blow him up. Well, I mean, it's, it, it looks like a cool shot. But... <laughs> well, visually, that's fine. But I mean, look, I mean, if, you know, The Last Jedi was visually great. You know, I mean, I mean, if all you care about is just cool kills and visual stuff, well, then that's great. Then, then, then you'll like every fucking horror movie that comes out but this is just silly like this is and his heart still beating this is, again this is when we get back into the whole supernatural thing that jason really isn't human and i just i don't like that element to jason i like the part two version of jason where he's like like the original michael where they're, yeah. they're human they have a supernatural presence to them but they're not you know what i mean um it's just whatever yeah no it's true it's true um i just thought this was jason Born. goes to hell to me like <laughs> Listen, I'll take Jason X over Jason Goes to Hell. Like, I, I'm actually going to say that. I no, would rather... Yeah, same. I would much rather watch Jason X than Jason Goes to Hell. I think this movie's dog shit. And, well, I and, think why we chose this is just pure comedy of everybody wanting to see what you're going to say about the movie. Well, it's just so, like, look, you know, and I always say this, and it's true. I, I don't mean, I don't say this to blow smoke up anybody's ass. I mean, making movies is really hard. It is, you know, Isn't and... and Kane Hodder there? Sorry? Isn't that Kane Hodder there standing there? As that is kid? Kane Hodder, yes. That is okay. Kane Hodder standing there. Got a little mullet left. You know, he's hanging on to the 80s there. Even though it's, he, it's 1993, but he's hanging on to the mullet. This is the guy from Rocky V who played like the Don King character. Yes. Oh, God, Rocky V. <laughs> but I mean, you know, it's it's the kind of thing where... I want to try knocking me down. Yeah, we'll just try... Rocky, are you okay? Um What's up, <laughs> yeah, I, I just don't think uh, uh, it's just for the look, look, I mean, I know there are fans out there that can watch this movie, enjoy it and, and uh, you know, have 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 fun. Fine. But it is so far removed for me from, you know, the Friday the 13th that I like which is really only the first four movies, really. I mean, I don't mind six, but I mean, other than that, like one through four and six, you know, I mean, that's it. And, and and it's so far, it's like I'm watching a, it's like I'm watching a fan film. You know, somebody's, not, and again, not that fan films can't be great, but I just mean somebody's, a, you know, silly, crazy idea um, that is so far removed. And it's just, I mean, the whole premise of this movie is that Jason is blown to smithereens, but people get, I don't know, uh, possessed by his body parts, start biting into his body. Like, think about this. Think about back to that first Friday the 13th movie. Friday the 13th now part one, two, and three, right? And the, yeah, and, and now think that like, now we're at a point in this film where people are biting into the blown up body parts. They become possessed and are Jason, and then, and then they pass it on to, it's like, it's just, it's a it's a shadow of what it was. I I didn't look. I know that the Friday the Thirteenth films, you know, they they were never really meant meant to be taken too seriously. But I never got the impression that they were meant to be taken like fucking carnival acts and just weird, silly creep show nonsense. I I just don't. I, I like I never got that impression. But I guess when you do so many of these movies. You don't know where to go. And this is the perfect example of we have no idea what to do with this character anymore. And I don't even know why they made this movie. Friday the 13th's... Um, Friday the 13th aficionados and fans and experts can certainly help me out in 
this regard. But I don't see the reason. I mean, Jason goes, uh, sorry, um, Jason Takes Manhattan was 1989. And by 1993, the slasher subgenre was pretty dead. You know what I mean? I mean, I mean, there were films that were starting to come out in the early 90s, like Candyman and, you know. But I, I mean, it wasn't what it was during the golden age of slashers, which was like seven or eight years prior. I don't even know why they bothered making this movie. Why bother making this movie? Well, we need to wrap it up. No, fuck. I just, I don't, I don't understand. Yeah. Sorry, say again, Tony. I'm saying you you wrapped it up in Manhattan. I, I would prefer Manhattan over this movie as well, too. Yeah, I'm and not Manhattan. A fan of Manhattan at all. No. In fact, for me, it ends at seven. I only own the first seven movies, yeah. except I do own a poster of Jason Takes Manhattan because it's the I Love New York where he's slashing through. Yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. It's cool. It, it's a cool marketing post. Yeah. You know, like that I will give credit where credit is due. The marketing of it is great. The movie in itself is whatever. But if I had to choose, of the two movies, this over Manhattan. I, I'd watch Manhattan before watching this. But. Yeah, and I agree. I think Jason Takes Manhattan is also garbage. Uh, <laughs> but it, it's like the lesser of two evils, right? You know, it's like, well, Jason Takes Manhattan, what a dog shit ending that was where suddenly he turns back into a little boy. What the hell is that crap? That's a big, but you know what? It's better than this, you know, and, and, and that's not saying much, you know, uh, which is... <laughs> I'm not even, I, I own it, but it's like, I don't even, like, for me, I end it with six. You know what I mean? Like, I, I, I'm a fan of six. Yeah. That I would watch more so than um, any of the, anything past that. It's like, no, I, yeah. I can't. And again, and dog shitting on the, the movies because I know there's hardcore fans. I know there's Kane Hodder. Oh, yeah, yeah. Hardcore fans yep. and they love it and I get it. I understand it. And yep. I don't want, I don't, I'm not trying to turn this into a two hour bashing of this movie, but. Come on. Yes, we are. Like, no, no, no. Look at where Jason was in part two and even three and four. Okay. Then you, you, this is where even six, at least with six, as crazy as six is, and I get why they did six. It's the goth MTV of the of the franchise. It's that Elm was, Street four. Or three. Or Elm Street three. Or you know, three. Whatever. Yeah. Yeah. You know four I mean? is really more MTV, it's but yeah. It, it is the MTV of the Friday the thirteenth franchise. It yeah. makes sense. It's it's fun. It's cool. Um, I, I don't really have too much negative to say about uh, the sixth one in the franchise, but then when you get to seven, you start to see like, okay, here we go. You know what I mean? Like yeah. it's, well, now it's Jason versus Carrie, and, and you know, and it's like yeah, not yeah. Literally, not no. literally Carrie, but Tina, the girl. Yeah, yeah. Who, I agree. No, I, I know what you're saying. Yep. No, I just know? I didn't I didn't realize. Oh yeah, here we go. He's gonna eat the heart. I know, I know. It's, and and but, I remember like up to uh, this point, I'm like. <laughs> I'm like, where's the girl from the beginning of the movie? That's all I cared about as a 14-year-old boy. I was like, I want to get back to the girl from the beginning of this movie. <laughs> you know, I was like, I want to just watch her for for 90 minutes. And then I remember watching this. Oh, this is just terrible. Here it comes. We were talking. But when we saw this. Oh, my, like this. What the fuck is going on here? It's so weird. It's just so weird. Yeah. Was when this we saw, after hard up for money? Probably. There wasn't many people in the theater when we saw this one. Um, and so we were just like, we were like, what the fuck is going on here? Like, we were all kinds of confused. And look at like this, the, like the fucking spirit shit. And again, I mean, no disrespect to the filmmakers. I, I don't. I mean, I, I don't know them. And nobody, nobody sets out to make a bad film. Okay, and I don't know the logistics of the production on this. Maybe they don't like it either. Maybe they didn't have the budget they had, you know, they wanted or something. I don't know. I just know that watching this movie, I, yeah. I, rem I remember Spirit. it being such a far cry away. Far cry away from anything. Sorry, Tony, say again? No, you were right. I forgot about the spirit things flying into it. Yeah, like, it's just like, what is going on here? Kane Hodder looks a little bit like, uh, just very, he looks like, um, oh, I'm fuck. Here a paycheck billy ray cyrus <laughs> right around that time no yeah yeah, yeah. don't break my heart Eight. my achy breaky heart yeah, 92, 93. The kids you know i got actually pulled that guitar his some gave all guitar my mom um she worked for um ovation um command uh, ovation they made ovation guitars mm. And um, like made for like richie zambora bon jovi and so all different types of bands very um, cool 
and I got to hold a few, like even Bon Jovi's guitars back in uh, the late, late 80s, early 90s. But Billy Ray Cyrus is very infamous. Some I have photos of that to send it to you. Um, I got to hold his Some Gay Law guitar yeah. uh, back in the day. But yeah, you're right. I forgot dudes were doing that because Billy Ray had brought that mold. He was the last one. He was like, he was the last, like him and Joe Dirt, the last two kings of the mullets. Yeah. <laughs> and that was, now, you should, I, dude, you should. I forgot you, about this. Uh Spidey Fan 1993 says the director was 23 his first gig and it shows. Now, to be fair, yes, that's true. I remember that. Adam Marcus, I think, is the director. He's very young. And you could say that it shows. But, I mean, you know, put a 40-year-old who's got 10 films under his belt in here and it's still the same story. Now, unless Adam also wrote the script as well, maybe he did, I, I don't know. But, you know, I, I don't know if a more seasoned director, you know, could have made a better movie with the same script, <laughs> you know, it's the no, story. But there are elements to the story um, that I do like. Um, not this garbage. Thing, right? Like if this were just Jason in general, this would be all right. You know, there's the, there's coming up here. There's some scenes with the campers out camping and mm -hmm. all that. The girl's like riding her boyfriend and she gets split in two and whatnot. Um, like there's scenes like that. Like if it was, that was just Jason and it was just your typical Friday the 13th film, and he wasn't jumping from body to body, that would be all right. This shit here where he's jumping from body to body, it's like, what the fuck? Well, that's, that's exactly it. And, and, and also, too, it, it comes down to what your, uh, you know. this new dude ends up becoming Jason at one point, right? I can't remember. He's anchored, yeah. I like dude, yeah. I literally have not seen this movie in like 25 years. Like, I, I cannot remember, like, you know what I mean? I mean, I can remember it, but I it's not like I'm watching it. It's in my, I'm going to watch Friday the 13th. I, I don't watch bad, I, I don't watch films I don't like, except for now, obviously. But, you know, we're doing it obviously for the show. But um, I don't. This was our most requested movie to watch, guys. Totally. Yeah. <laughs> I just don't like this. It's just it's not Friday the Thirteenth. It's but 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 it is in some ways. And it's like you know when I say I'd rather watch Jason X, it's not because I think Jason X is a good movie. I don't. I think it's a big pile of shit too. But at least it's got Jason in it, who's Jason. And I'm not following some guy or a bunch of people who are eating the body parts. Or it, it's like it's some weird hybrid of. Friday the 13th and, and but look if all you care about and there are fans out there that all they care about are how many kills are in the movie you know what's the blood what's the guts that's all I care about you know I mean I remember it's that that's all they want and there's nothing wrong with that if that's all you want then you might enjoy this kind of thing for me I could watch a, a, a blood guts you know film too you know, from time to time but this kind of shit is just, it's too hokey to me. It's too gimmicky. It's too gimmicky. Like, even for Friday the 13th, it's too gimmicky. You know, I mean, Jason go, um, Jason Lives was kind of like, you know, kind of a, a little self-aware, right? Swan song of the franchise. That should have been it right there. <laughs> yeah, yes. But, it, but even, like, it has a little bit of comedy. It's a little self-aware with the American Express card, you know, and all that. It's a, But, you know, that's that's as far as I would go. Like, for me, Jason <laughs> Lives... Tommy, Doy, Tommy, Tommy Jarvis. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's, 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 it's fine. Like, that's as far as I would go. Um... This shit is just is, Dave. Is weird, dumb shit. It's weird. But Dave, we need more. We need more. We oh, need Jason, no. Dave, <laughs> we need more. Or Michael, I want 15 more Halloween Listen, films. Listen, at the end of Halloween Kills, Michael is going to explode. In Halloween <laughs> Ends, Allison is going to be... Laurie, Laurie Strode's going to be the killer in the last film. Allison is going to be picking up uh, the shape's heart, eating the heart, and becoming the killer. And then Tony Moran's going to put the mask on one more time and make mm -hmm. his final. That's it. That's <laughs> it. Yep. Uh, actually, I I disagree. I I like Halloween 5. As I say that, throwing up in my mouth, uh, better than this movie. But Oh, I'd the watch cop, Halloween 5 over this movie. That is, uh, Halloween 5's got Ellie in it for a brief five minutes, and she's naked in the shower. And 
Danielle Harris does give a good performance for what she was given, um, which I think was just pure laziness. And that's why they made her a mute throughout half of the film because they went into production with only half a script. So like, what do we do with this girl? Well, let's just make her a mute. Okay. I want to ask the chat room. Where in all the movies in the Friday the 13th franchise, not including the remake, not, well, I guess you can include the remake. I don't know. But like, where would you place this? What number would you place Jason Goes to Hell? Is it dead last for you? Is it number, is it one? Like, is there anybody, anybody out of, anybody in the chat, is there anybody that, that loves this movie, that thinks this is one of the best Friday the 13th films? Like, there can't be. Is there somebody? Don't be shy. We're not going to make fun of you. All right? Some one just troll you well know. somebody might just say yeah me because no no i, I mean i mean be honest like be dead serious where would you place this in the friday the 13th franchise 12 for terrified fish dead last are there, are there 13 of them is yeah, something like that last last yeah, last yeah. i'd watch jason takes manhattan over this one says daisy worst I'd say the bottom of the barrel for me is Manhattan, X, and then this. That's like the final three for me. Chester Franklin Jr. says nine. That means he's got, he may, well, means there's a few others he thinks are worse. 12th place, I'm last place. If, if he says like Manhattan or X is worse, I mean, I get it. I, you know, because I mean, like you said, you know, we're not saying like Manhattan and Jason X is like 10 times better. I mean, it's a fraction, like you said. The only reason why Jason X is better is because Jason's in the fucking movie. That's you know? it. <laughs> That's it. That, that, I mean, that really is it. It's it, though. Uh, Manhattan's the same thing. It's got Jason in it. He gets a new mask. I do like the Manhattan mask. It's, it's I mean, it's, now, uh, you know. Here's like, something you know. that's interesting. Cody Snyder says, I love it, but it would be number nine or ten. Now, Cody, tell me, why do you love it? What is it about this movie you love? Is there nostalgia? Was it one of the first Friday movies you saw? Do you genuinely love the story and think it's a great direction for Jason? What is it about this movie that you love? Even though you place it nine or 10, you really like the movie. I'm genuinely curious. All right. Which one do you like better? Resurrection, this, or Freddy's Dead? <laughs> oh, <laughs> you know what? This That's might be last. I hate to say it, but at least Resurrection <laughs> and and Freddy's Dead have Freddy and Michael in it. You know, I mean, it might just be that simple at the end of the day, and and that's it. And this guy, you got no hope. This guy, he was in the uh, Friday the Thirteenth TV series too for a minute. Was he? Yeah, he was one of the lead actors in that series. Wow, I didn't know that. that. That's actually. You know, I will say this. Um, if they ever brought that back, I would be okay with that. Like as a Netflix, you know, 10 episode type deal. Um, I've watched a few of those again. And granted, low budget. You know what I mean? Like they did not have the budget to make the type of shit that they were going for in the Friday the 13th television series. But the concept I got, I understood. It was, it was like a... Twilight Zone meets Tales of the Crypt type thing. And I thought that was really cool. And if they were to bring that back and even title it Friday the 13th um, and do some of the creative stuff they did, but with modern technology, a little bit of a bigger budget, it'd be cool with them turning that into like an anthology type series. That yeah. Would, yeah, I wouldn't be okay Dar again. Darren Sand says, uh, I could watch Manhattan on a loop with a big smile on my face for the rest of my life rather than watch this again. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. It's true. Jason Takes Manhattan is a masterpiece compared to this. Oh, this it's is, Citizen Kane compared to this. <laughs> it, 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 at 100%. 100%. Did Cody respond back? Uh, Cody, I'm not sure if you did. Yeah, like, and you don't have to, Cody. I was just genuinely curious. Andrew L. sends in a $5 super chat and says, this is the worst movie I love. Such an insane and wild film and I can't help but have a good time. Oh, God. That's kind of how I feel about Seven. Honestly. No, I get that. Oh, you mean part seven, not Seven, Seven, Seven. No, no, no. Jason, uh, Friday. Okay, Friday. I was just going to say, I what? Like, no, God, no. That's a, that's a masterpiece. That's like, a masterpiece. That's masterpiece. No, what he's saying about Jason goes to hell. I get that because that's how I feel about Jason, uh, A New Blood, Part Seven. I mm. totally get. It. 
I can have a good time with that movie. And it's like, whatever. All right. You know, I mean, I think it's stupid. Carrie versus Jason, but mm-hmm. I have a good time with it. Um, this is just fucking stupid. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah, it's just, yeah, it's just a, uh, uh, a troll account. Um, but it's funny. There isn't a, uh, there isn't a, um, uh, there isn't a movie I, that is bad, like a horror sequel in any of those franchises that is bad that, that I can think of that I can have, a, that I can see myself like self saying, oh, I can have a good time with it. Like, I, I really like it because I just love the silliness of, I, I have to admit, when I think a movie's crap, I just think a movie's crap. I will say this girl here, like the kid, the, the, a lot of boobs the, in this movie. I wouldn't call them the counselors, but the, the young victims here, the one who doesn't have a boyfriend where she's third wheel. She's hot. She's really hot. The redhead or the brunette? Uh, the redhead. Tiny man. Redheads for me. Like, yeah, she's pretty. Man. Yep. Fire. Redheads and blondes. But I do love my name. So I'm not hating on brunettes. Yep. Oh, I had shirts like that back in the day. The, the they had a hood on them and they were yep. cut the flannels cut off at the sit. That was such a yep. huge popular thing. Yeah. You'd wear t shirts underneath them and shit. Probably she doesn't go and get in on it. Uh, Wouldn't that be awkward though? Like you're lying there. Um, um, and how would you rank Fight Club seven or Zodiac? They're all great fucking movies. I don't know if I could rank them. I don't know. Isn't that what's his name too? Who did that? Fincher, right? David Fincher did Fight Club seven. Yep. You know what other movie I think I do? Is it? Is it his? Hold on. <gasps> Matthew Foresi sends in four ninety nine. Says maybe I'm in the minority, but I still hate Halloween five more. Jason goes to hell is still awful. Freddy's dead is the bottom of the barrel. Fascinating. Yeah, I uh, at this point don't too. like this I, movie. I just off the other day and watched uh, my VHS copy of uh, Panic Room. Joey oh, that, that's Fincher. Yep. And young, uh, young Bella, or Kristen Stewart, whatever. A young Kristen Stewart, even uh, good what's movie. It? I, yeah. I, when I watched it, I was like, man, this is a really good fucking movie. I hadn't yeah. seen it. I hadn't, it was just sitting there, and I'm like, yeah, okay, just throw it on. Like, yeah, damn. Yeah. We got to do like a Fincher, you know, run. Pick out a few of his good flicks. We did Zodiac. Didn't know that. Yeah. Did we do seven? I think we did do seven. I don't think we've done seven. Nice no, we've done Zodiac, but I don't think we've done seven. I thought we did. No, I don't think so. I don't think so. Boy, I could be wrong, ten- but I don't think so. You go to a day. <laughs> I'm just throwing that out there. Oh, no, they're already subscribed, though. That's why. Oh, man. Yeah, that's why. They're already subscribed. Yo, dude, Chester, absolutely. Halloween 3 over Jason Goes to Hell? Fuck yeah. <laughs> oh my god, yeah. Halloween 3 is definitely like Citizen Kane compared to this fucking movie. 100%. 100%. Halloween 3 is up there in my rankings of the franchise. Um, I get that. I, I love that movie. I'm one of the few that says that openly and whatever. Right, right. But it's probably in the franchise. It's in like my top five. Of the Halloween break. Oh yeah, I forget. He killed. She's taking a shit or a pit. No, she's taking a piss. <laughs> Where are you? Are we? Are we? Are are you ahead or or behind? He's on top. Are you there? No, I'm like she's she's walking back to the tent. Now she's getting into the tent again. Okay, and then Let it pans me, oh. over and it shows the girl dead. It, what? Now she's getting on top. Okay. Let and me know when the dude is on top of his girl kissing, and I'll restart it. The dude's on top of her? Yeah. Okay, so he's he's got the condom in his hand. 
She's, Dude, I don't, might be. I don't know if we're we're synced up. She's taking it. She's now yeah, he's you're way ahead of me. Oh, pause. Your move. I'm pause. We might, be, we might be watching two different. Yeah, because the girl like the. the the redhead just got killed. The girl yeah, went out. Yeah. And now, okay. Now, now the girl's on top of the guy riding and him. The girl just went to go get a condom. Now she's going to the bathroom. You're ahead of me. Pause it for a second. Okay, mine's paused. I'll tell you when I get back. Um, we also may be watching two different versions of this film. Mm. I don't know. I just rented it on iTunes. It's possible. It's possible. So yeah. she's walking back to the tent. Uh, she doesn't, she looks back behind her. She's walking past the tent. No, she doesn't. Oh no. Now the camera pans on the dead girl leaning up against the tree. And she got on top of him again. She hands him the condom. He's bitching how he hates those things. All right. You, are you, we, are we synced up again? Uh, she's, where are you? She's on top of him. Yep. She tosses the condom like that. Hang on. And Let me know when she it, when it's a, a close up shot of her face as she's having sex. Um, he's pulling down the shirt. He's on top of her. As we're describing sex on YouTube, this is great. Yeah, that's right. Uh, the tent is it's an outside shot. Jason looking in. Well whatever yeah. uh the dude is now taking her panties off yeah <laughs> they've someone were to like tune in right now like what are they fucking watching the porn <laughs> uh he's on top of her and now they're having pretend sex yeah and i think they're about to flip I don't know. It's out. Jason's walking up to the tent. Yeah, he's on top of her. Okay. I. Uh, no. Now she. I just. Now she flipped and she's on top of him. Okay. Pause. Okay. And. Tents. They're outside. Shot. Now she's on top of him riding. Okay. All right. Yep. All right. Are we stuck up now? Yep, it's, yep, we're yeah, we're synced up. It, now it's a wide shot of her on top, and she's looking up, and she's about to. Jason just stepped on the condom, yeah, which was because it was actually inside the tent when she when he tossed it. Yeah, yep. yeah. I think we're watching two different versions of this. It's possibly, possible, yeah. So, whatever. Hopefully, we're synced up. Now. Yeah, we're probably close enough anyway. Jason's about to stab her. He stabbed her. Yep. Yep. So we're good. I think so. I think we are. Yeah, I think we are. Hell of a way to go. Jesus. It's crazy. It's just so lame. Like it's the dude and it's not Jason. Like it's just, what the fuck? Whatever. Yeah. No, it's not Jason. It's just a dude. Isn't this like his sister or some shit? Like family relative? Uh, Sorry, one second. I'm trying to get back to the thing. I don't know. I don't fucking know if this is a relative or maybe it is. Oh, this person here, you mean? Yeah. Isn't I don't know. Like maybe she, it is. Like they find out later on? It's possible. So I'm watching the extended version. Okay. Mm, you're watching the extended version? I must be. I'm just watching the theatrical cut. It's whatever iTunes gave me to rent. It's, that's what I picked. Right. Who's everyone's favorite? Jason? Well, I'm, I've seen number two. Um, Dash or Gillette. You pick. I mean, it's the same version of Jason. I think yours is white, right? Ted White? Yours, that's your boy? Yeah, Ted White or Richard Brooker. Yeah. Would be mine. That would be mine. Ted White or Richard Brooker. And yours is, is who? Dash? 
Dash. Yeah, Dash or Gillette. I mean, well, it's part two. It's the version of part two. Right, right. I got you. I got you. Um, yeah, I got you. I got you. I understand. I understand. I think the cop even becomes possessed. Like, he's one of the last people to come possessed by this fucking entity or whatever the fuck you call it. Weird looking alien thing that comes right. out of you know, at the end of the movie and goes up the girl's woohoo. And that's how Jason is reborn. What the fuck? Like, right. this would be in that meeting and be like, really? This is the best that we can come up with? Like, <laughs> really? Okay. Okay. This is what we're doing. That's it. That is what we're doing. Sorry, I'm just taking care of something here. Oh, he's next. Oh, okay. Yeah, you're right. Okay. Kills his girl and then... That's right, the cop becomes possessed now. See, right or, now I'm I'm at the part right, where the where he has this right. That's the other thing. I the guy out. that's strapped to the table. Yeah. Well, no. Did you see the fucking mailbox outside of this really nice? Oh yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. Not nice, but nice in comparisons to the fucking shack that Jason was living in in part two. So you're yes. telling me the Voorhees household, but yet Jason's living out in this fucking shack. Yes. Oh, like fuck off. Yeah. Hey. He's gonna shave him. Like, it's this kind of stuff here. Like, it's it's just so silly to me. This is silly. This is... So now we've gone into, like, pornography. Well, you know this is I mean? just... It's just fucking weird. Like, who wrote... Who wrote this? I'm gonna fucking hang on. Well, you know, like, look, these movies are intended, and this is not, like, a diss at girls, okay? Please don't take this the wrong way. But back in the 80s and 90s, these were intended for teenage boys. They really fucking were. Okay, that's the that was their target audience. Not saying girls weren't into it as well, too. There were. But when you would talk horror movies or go see horror films, primarily you were gonna see teenage boys watching these movies. And now I'm sitting here thinking to myself, okay, you got the dude who's possessed by Jason is over this other dude that he's shaving. He's got him tied up on a table. I'm just like, like what are we fucking showing teenage boys here? You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. what the fuck? saying that we haven't watched the fucking porno at that point but so yeah the story was written by two other guy or the the screenplay was written by two other guys it was based on a story that adam marcus had come up with along with somebody else but yeah, well. like it's 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 really for this to be the final i mean obviously it's not but for this to be the final friday is just is just silly. Do you know what I mean? It's just absolutely ridiculous. <laughs> I'm just laughing at that cop. Like, okay. Oh, it's crazy. <laughs> All right. It's crazy. Yeah, that's true. See, I got it. Yeah, you're. You, Sean Cunningham was a uh, soft porn, porn director. He he was. Yeah, very very early on. Yeah. Yeah, I think you're still ahead of me, or I'm ahead of you. Right now, she's reaching for the gun. She's got the gun. She's pointing it to the guy's head. No, blows his head off. I'm watching the extended version. She's fighting with the guy right now. She just saw Jason reflecting in the mirror. I just saw that. Yeah. She's reaching for her gun, and she shoots him in the head. Blam. Yeah. And now he falls to the ground. Yeah. So yeah. I must be watching the extended. Version. You must be. Yeah. yeah. That's I, I might, That's what. So just keep going. Just tell me when it's over and stop it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. It's funny. I can I can hear the movie on your end. Now, technically, do all these guys count and are as credited as playing Jason Voorhees? 
Uh, oh, that's a good point. I mean, technically, from a certain point of view, they have played Jason Voorhees. Right. A a version of Jason. A version. This is totally Elm Street 2 right here. The tongue coming. Why did he leap like that? This is like a, but this is like just. Ah, oh, it's terrible. Chat room. What, what I mean, what would you have liked to have seen in a final Friday the 13th movie? If this really, in a Jason Goes to Hell, let's say it's 1993, Jason Goes to Hell, what would you have wanted to see? Chat room, what would you, fans out there, what would you have wanted to see as a final Friday the 13th movie? That's just so weird. Oh! Right through, right through. Wow. Yeah, baby. Yeah. Jason goes to hell. Intel Wild, my man. Intel. It's been a long time, Intel. Welcome back to the show. Intel Wild sends in $5. Thank you, buddy. Says Dave, watching the NBA free agency right. Excuse me. Watching the NBA free agency uh, right now. And you and you guys, uh, that pick of you was me. I had Castle Grayskull and Snake Mountain. Oh, that picture from my video the other week. Same. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, I was a big He-Man fan. Huge. Like, this is just so... It's just, you know, it's terrible. It's absolutely terrible. Yeah, I agree with that, Nate. Tommy Jarvis should have returned. Not to this shit show of a movie, yeah. but... Um, you, I mean, although, I mean, you, you, you sort of concluded his character in Jason in part six. You, you, I would I would have hated for them to bring him back only to shit on what they did, you know, in part six. Because mm. uh, they did a good job, you know, even though it was very self-aware with certain things like Dave pointed out with the credit mm. cards. And look, Tom, uh, the director of that uh, movie, has stated several. He did that on purpose. He, he, yeah. he did because... He wanted someone in the movie. He said that. He said, like, I put the American Express card in there because I knew somebody, you know, in the theater would see, say, don't leave home with that. You know, sure right. enough, I think at the viewing, someone did say that, you know, that the viewing that he went to. Um, so I, I get why he did what he did. So because of how good part six is and because how much of a fan favorite that film has become and how bad this franchise became, you'd almost hate to, to see what they would have done. Um it would have probably even ruined what they did in part six, very similar to what they did in part four with Halloween and how they took a shit on that with part five. Yeah. I just, I just don't understand, you know, like this is the kind of story that would be great as an isolated story in a vacuum that is, you know, it's like a creep show episode. Do you know what I mean? Like, you don't even have to have it as Jason. You just have it as some That's weird spirit. Weird spirit thing, yes. That yeah, jumps absolutely. from body to body and it goes around attacking people. Like, Jason is useless. Do you know what I mean? He's useless. It's completely pointless. That baby's got a lot more hair on its head than when we first saw it a few moments ago. Really? Oh, maybe it's not the same baby. It definitely isn't because... Maybe it's not the same baby. She was holding a baby while she was talking on the phone. And that redhead's really hot, too. Jesus, there's some good-looking redheads in this movie. Um, Tony. Yeah, I could have sworn when she was talking on the phone with her mom, she had a baby in her hand, and that baby was very bald. Hmm. Maybe it was a different baby. Maybe it was a different baby. Did you ever think of that? It was a different baby. <laughs> I'm too heartbroken because I think that was her mom that got killed, right? It's, it's your mom that got killed. I think the blonde, that the the the, the girl who died in the house there with that dude, it was the mother. Mm. I don't know. I've got the volume turned all the way down because I don't want you to get hit with a copyright. Yeah, yeah, no, that's fine. I haven't, this movie practice this, this guy here with the glasses and the the letterman jacket he looks like somebody that should be that should have died in an elm street movie oh, he looks sure. he looks ripe to be like a freddy krueger kill yeah not a jason victim but a no. freddy 
A Freddy Krueger kill. Definitely. 100%. It's the baby. That redhead's fire, though. Tony, go out and get yourself a redhead. You need to. You need to go out and get yourself a red head. I do. I diddly diddly do. Modding this looks a little bit like, uh, what's your name there? Jennifer. Um, or Megan from part six. Jennifer Cook. Mm, so yeah. You know, like they could be cousins. Right, right. But like cousins. You know, like how like some of your cousins, you like, you might have like some family like resemblance features. Yep, yep. Her and Jennifer Cook could have like, uh, man, that redhead is really hot. Now, <laughs> now who are these people? Who I don't the know. fuck are these people? They're just random know. people. I know the blonde is the daughter of the mom waitress. And oh. the, the, the that's the news anchor guy. And I think they're a thing. Mm. Um, like an item the baby i don't know who the baby belongs to mm -hmm. um but clearly this is where curse of michael myers got there the hell's that stain on the on this fucking shirt that was because he was holding the mom who died uh, oh that's right that's right that's right i totally forgot about this I'm not <laughs> this is the country version of dr Loomis talking to the pretty yes boy. yes like it just it just like they would have been better off. I don't know how much this movie. I don't know how this, this movie made at the box office. I mean, but then again, you know, nice person movie of all time. What are you talking about? No, but I mean, like, be, because it was marketed as the final Friday, it probably it probably did okay. But that's not a sign. It went opening weekend. Nobody was in there. It was just us. It was uh, me and my friends and my brother. No, that was it. Well, that's the problem. But I mean, why didn't you like you just kind of go? Okay, you know what? Let's just fucking do a regular Jason movie. It's the last one, you know. So that's Jason's niece, the false prophet. The blonde is Jason's niece, or the the Jason's the niece. Yeah, I know. We're, we're getting into Halloween territory now. Um, so ah. the blonde is Jason's niece, and the and the mom was Jason's sister. And the redhead is his former wife. <laughs> Me and Jason are have to have a little heart to heart when it comes to that. Jason race. was married to the redhead. Me and Jason are gonna have to have a little heart. Me and Kane are gonna have to have a little heart to heart. A little heart to heart. That's what you're gonna have to do. This is just crazy. Oh yeah, and then he has to break his fingers to give information. Like, what the fuck? Like, he's gotta break the fingers to give information. Like, okay, like, why? Like, I don't even get this. Like, you're breaking his fingers just to be <sighs> stupid. <laughs> why? Why would you do that? Okay, so that's it. So okay, so the all right. So if I'm understanding this correctly, this new family tree here that we're, we're being told yeah the waitress who died in the in the arms of the glasses dude that's jason's sister that we never heard of up until this point okay whatever um the blonde is <laughs> the daughter of that woman which would make her jason's niece so we've definitely right. gone we're, we're, we're definitely now in halloween land uh, with, with this storyline. Yeah, uh, they, they've jumped into Halloween land, but they've jumped into, like, resurrection area. Uh, where, where where was the sister in the, like, first seven, eight films? You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> I mean, and they live they live in Crystal Lake, you know, or the, the, the town. Um, Wait, the sister? Jason has a sister? In this in this movie. Sister. That's so, how you have a twin sister. Obi-Wan was wise to hide her from me. At least, you know, it, it can make sense with Halloween 4 because they did, they, they yeah. tied Jamie to uh, Jimmy and uh, Lori. You know what I mean? As those are her parents, which are connected to Halloween 2. So, okay. You, you, this is the next movie follow. Man, he's breaking his knuckles for information. Makes no fucking sense. But anyways. Well, it's just to add, it's just, you know, because somebody, you know, when they were writing the script, they were like, hey, you know, it'd be a cool idea. You know, I mean, it just, no, it doesn't make any sense. It's just, it's just oh. to make the audience go, ooh, ooh. It doesn't even do that. Like, I just don't. This guy needs, actually, this guy does kind of look like a uh, substitute teacher I had in the eighth grade. 
He's the cowboy version of Dr. Lomas. The the guy with the glasses. He kind of looks like a substitute teacher. Oh, he's definitely he has a he has that substitute. He has teacher. a substitute teacher written all over his face. I think his name was Mister, or we call them Mister Darbison. Greg Darbison was that his name? Shout out to Greg Darbison all the way back in 1991 or two or whatever it was. Whenever I was in eighth grade, two, I guess. Three, I can't remember now. Um, shout out to Greg Darbison, who was probably, I don't know, he's probably oh, in his 60s now. That little creature thing crawls up the waitress's woohoo at the end of the movie. That's how Jason. Oh my God, how Somebody Jason. crawls up a waitress's vagina at the end of the movie. Towards the end of the film, Jason's sister somehow ends up in the mansion of the Voorhees house that we never see up until this point in time in the franchise. <laughs> and, and, and the little monster thing that comes out of that dude at the end, which I guess is the Jason entity, scurries on up her woohoo in the most weirdest incestual uh, thing you'll ever see in horror movie history, and Jason's reborn. Okay. Jonathan Grant is right. I'm so confused. I'm right there with you, buddy. Like I, I, and again, I haven't seen this movie in probably at least 20 something years. And I'm watching for the first time with you guys tonight in years. And I'm following, I mean, I am following along here, but, uh, but it's just like, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm reminded of, of just the absurdity of the movie. I mean, this is just so silly. And, and, and I guess it's, I guess by this point, Jason had become, the fucking freak show. Yeah, well, you know, the freak show, the carnival act. It was, and it's not that Friday the 13th was ever taken that seriously, but man, I mean, I would have just gone back to the roots, to basics, and just done a Friday the 13th where maybe his mom comes back as well and they both try to kill counselors and then they have to kill both him and his mom. Like, I mean, that would be more, you know, I mean, that's woo, do, 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 but at least that would be kind of tied into the original a bit, you know? This is just Again, silly. The only cool thing about this movie that we talked about after we left the theater was seeing Freddy's hand grab Jason's mask. Well, that was yeah. Me. But as a teenage 14-year-old boy, that is cool. You know what I mean? Like, to, yeah. to a 14-year-old, that's like, wow, it's fucking cool. And you ne had never seen that up until this point. You had never seen the merger of those. And, and that's No, all you we, hadn't. At that point, that's all we had as horror fans. The way... You're absolutely right. The way this guy is sitting on that stool, he's, his ass is like molesting the stool. It's like in, in wrapped around it. And look at this waitress. So this redhead with the baby, that is the sister friend. or the niece? Friend of the sister. The, the niece. friend of the niece. And the niece was the blonde. Yes. God. <laughs> now, who's, now who's the sister? The waitress that got killed earlier. The waitress who got killed earlier was Jason Voorhees' sister. Yes. Get out of here! This one. Come on! At all, Mrs. Voorhees well, completely forgets about her, you know, and goes on a killing spree. Of in the course, and that's totally like what they did with Freddy's dead, and all of a sudden, Freddy's got a oh, oh I've got a daughter. <laughs> That 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 movie, Freddy's Dead, that totally diminishes. Look, without saying what we all know, what Freddy's character was before he became, you know, the man in the dream, mm. uh, what he did to kids. Okay, I mean, we we don't need to go down that road and get into details, but it makes the character more creepier, if I can use it that word that way, mm. when. Um, he's a single guy with no kids and he does that so when he's a father and does that to kids. I don't know. It's, it's just, it's not as creepy as the lone wolf. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. When Freddie is by himself and he has no kids and whatever and does that, that's just fucking, that's creepy. It's a creepy fucking dude. Right. right. People out there that are fucking like that when he's a father I don't know. I just have a horror. I'm not saying there's not fathers out there that don't do fucked up shit. We right. Do story time, but I don't know. I just, I have a hard time. Now you time. see, Cody Leach has made his way into the room. Welcome, Cody. And Cody says, at least, at, he says, at least this movie. Cody, 
not like a troll because we got trolled with drum dums earlier. Uh, that that's true, but I, I it, well, it, it could be, it may be a troll, but 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 let's say it's not. Cody uh, says at least this movie isn't Freddy's Dead or Seed of Chucky bad. Uh, it's funny because I actually think I would rather now I haven't seen Seed of Chucky, but I would actually I think I may wa I rather and Freddy's Dead is awful. Freddy's Dead is god. Awful. So when I say that I would rather watch Freddy's Dead than Jason Goes to Hell, it doesn't mean that I think Jason Goes to Hell is leaps and bounds better than Freddy's Dead. It's just like, you know, it's like a horse race, right? You know, where it's like, you know, you're at the, or, or, or you know, the 100 meter dash where you have this and then like this and this, like this. You know, it's like first, second, uh, you know, first, second, first, second, first, second. Like we're talking milliseconds, you know? And this is kind of how I feel. But at least Freddy's in it. Now, Freddy might be the, oh, I got a daughter. And you got Roseanne Barr and Tom Arnold. But at least, at least Freddy's in it, you know? And it is a terrible movie. It's absolutely terrible. However, to Cody's point, maybe the fact that Jason isn't in this movie and Freddy is in the movie in Freddy's Dead, this is a weird paradoxical sort of thing, that, that Freddy, because he's acting all bonkers, maybe having Jason hardly in this movie in comparison to Freddy's Dead is the strength of this movie because you don't have as much shitty things with Jason, even though you have shitty things surrounding Jason. And in Freddy's Dead, you've got, oh, you know, cool graphics. <laughs> you know, and, and shit, I mean, you know, I mean, there is an argument to be made. There is an argument to be made. But this movie is just atrocious. Where was Jason's sister? I want to know. Where was the fucking sister? House, okay, you said you're telling me that Jason's out there in part two in this fucking little shack, but has this house available to him? I thought the movie had switched over to Evil Dead for a minute. I, I mean, this looks like something out of Evil Dead. Like craft and magic and stuff. Like, come, come on. No, I got to go with Freddy's Dead over this. Fuck that. Doesn't at this... Least, at does, least Freddy stick to somewhat of the continuity. Somewhat of the continuity. I does mean, you it, do part of the backstory of what Freddy did. Um, you know... God. And you got Alice Cooper plays Freddy's father, which, you know, that's all right. But know? again, horse race, right? Like we're talking, you know, first, uh, second, first, second, first. Yeah, we're not second, talking first. like secretary. <laughs> you know what I mean? No, no, no. It's, it's like milliseconds. This is a total set too, you can tell. But now this really does look like something out of like the evil dead. It does. And you're trying to convince me that this is Voorhees' house. And he's had this all along, and he's never like we never see it throughout the entire fucking nine movies. Come on, yeah. yeah. I don't know. It's just like that's what makes Jason in part two like it just makes that character even creepier. This dude mm. in a fucking shack in the middle of nowhere, uh, surviving off the fucking land and shit, and probably eating squirrels and whatnot. Like that's just fucking weird. And just this shit. It's like okay, well, this was I, what. Dude, sorry. I'm just going to say this is just someone's bad idea that should never have been made. It's just that right. simple. There there had to have been. Listen, it's four years after Jason takes Manhattan. So I don't know why four years later, like, hey, let's make a final Friday. Okay. Um, but if you're like, if you're going to do it, this could not have possibly, possibly have been the best idea that came across that desk. The come on. I mean, maybe it was the most different. Maybe it was the most ballsy. Maybe it was the most something we've never done before. But if you're going to make a movie with the intention of ending everything, why don't you just go back to basics? Why don't you just throw a bunch of kids at Crystal Lake? You can extend it a bit where it's Jason and, and his mom now or something. Maybe you throw something in there or whatever. But why this? Yeah, like, why okay. this? Mom. You know what I mean? Like, no no callbacks. To, like, if this is supposed to be the final Friday. Like, you know, the mother is the one who started this, this all, and you've you got no callbacks to her. You know, I, no. you know, say what we want about the remake. The remake at least did a good job of tying in, you know, where where the story began and then how it, you know, evolves to Jason. Yeah. Um, whether you like the remake or not, hey, your, your kids are always going to be uh, stupendous. Stupendous, apparently. You know, it's the greatest line in horror movies. <laughs> but... This fucking bag of garbage. What's happening like, to this guy right now? I don't know. I mean, fucking Evil Dead. Is, is he transform? <laughs> is he transforming? He's like he's just like. Uh, 
I mean, that's what he's doing. He's like, this is what's going on right now. Somebody's going to make a gift of that. A gift, a gift. Hey, you guys. Oh, hey, the effects look cool. That's cool. Why is this guy in the Letterman jacket not dead yet? Somebody fucking killed this guy already. No, How is this like one of the guys we're supposed to be following? This looks like he just put. He's the he's the final dude of sorts in this. Oh. He does live. Holy snap and but crap! In fairness to the actor, again, I will say this: in fairness to the actor, if you watch the Friday the Thirteenth television series, mm. he's the star in that. And like I said, I mean, if you can if you can set aside the fact that it was made in like the eighties, right? Then, early 90s late 80s early 90s somewhere around there um they didn't have the budget but the storylines were pretty creative right uh, and they were fun oh, stories so it, he, he is redeemed in that when it comes to the franchise oh yeah this is the sister or the, the niece you know mm. you don't get it you just get bras that's it mm. she didn't do nude she wasn't getting that payday Now we're going to get a Janet Lee psycho moment. Oh, uh, yeah. No, it's it's not. It's not Cody. Nice try, Cody. Or fake Cody, I should say. Nice try. No, it's 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 not him. Yeah, Jonathan Ball. Exactly. It is. A, it's a cool Friday the 13th. It was cool. Again, you know, don't go in there expecting fucking great shit, but it, it's 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 like I said, it's that hybrid of like Tales from the Crypt and Twilight Zone made into a Friday the 13th uh, yeah. series. A lot better than the Nightmare on Elm Street uh, series that they did briefly. Yeah. I thought it was. I wasn't really big into uh, that, that Nightmare on Elm Street series. I tried watching a couple episodes. I was like, eh, it was all right. You know what television series, though, I am starting to watch? I just started season one and two on it on Hulu. Uh, did you ever get into that show, Perfect Strangers? With, with, oh, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I love that show. Now, keep our talking this. Yeah, we used to watch that as kids. Yep. On, like, they were the OG TGIF. Like, yep. they were even before Full House. They they kicked off TGIF. For sure, for sure. Like, their physical comedy between the two of them, like, they were really fucking good. Like, I remember watching it with my brother as, as mm -hmm. a kid and, you know, we would mimic the dance of joy and all that stuff. Yep. Um, but now watching it as an adult again, I'm like, damn, their fucking physical comedy is really fucking yep. good. I had, the reason why I know it's not Cody because I had forgotten I had made Cody an honorary moderator on the channel and uh, oh, really? Cody showed up without a wrench. So I know it's not him. Cody's got that wrench. Yep. This is this is this is this is Tony right here carrying the damsel in distress. <laughs> Look at that! You can see her ass and everything. Wait, and did I, she have underwear on? That's what sex. That's what sex nights looks like for me after we go into an abandoned house. Yep, Except that's what it is. That's what it is. Oh. <laughs> uh, Like, this is like, what? Like, it's just, like, again, like, as I'm watching this film, take Friday the 13th out of it, take Jason Voorhees out of it, and it might be kind of a fun creep show kind of creature feature sort of thing. I agree. But if as a... That element, or if you call it a Friday the 13th movie, it's like an anthology. like they Or do an anthology, right. Now take Jason out. It would be cool. It'd be like, all right, like it'd be like the season of the witch for Halloween. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Take Jason out of it. It's maybe like a, yeah, it's just a fun little sort of, I mean, I don't know if I would make this an hour and a half. You could probably make this like a 30 minute or, or, or you know, whatever. I mean, it's it, like, it's the idea in and of itself is not necessarily terrible. I mean, it's not something I would come up with because I don't really care about that kind of thing, but, it, but it's just using it as the, as the catalyst that drives the final Friday, the 13th film supposedly uh, is ridiculous. I mean, that, 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 that doesn't, uh, uh, that's just silly. You know, it, it's just so not in Friday, the 13th, 
you know, but if this was like a, an episode on creep show or something or, or whatever, I mean, it might be kind of, you know, charming, it, not charming, but sort of maybe watchable, I guess, but it's, it's knowing that it's, it's connected to, and all these people are supposed to be Jason because they've taken bites out of certain people and out of his heart and stuff. It's just like, what are we watching since when was that shit possible? It's possible now. Come on, you son of a bitch! It's just so silly. It's Where so you? silly. I know you're ahead of me. Uh, right now, the blonde has ran into the police station. She's talking to the older cop or whatever. Well, not too far. You're, you may be about a few seconds because she just did that. Yeah, so. yeah. Now, this blonde here, she's the niece. The, She's the niece. She's Jason Voorhees's he's his niece, ladies and gentlemen. Well, all right. I mean, if that's the way you want to do it. Why isn't this guy dead yet? This guy in the Letterman jacket. I want him dead, ladies and gentlemen. I want him dead. He becomes the new Jason. Dude. <laughs> If he was in an Elm Street movie, he would have been dead in like the first 10 minutes of the movie when he was driving that car. Oh, yeah. Freddy's glove, right. he would have fallen asleep. Freddy's glove would have come out of nowhere. <laughs> like, oh. This happened to Dean. Uh, what's his, what's your name's boyfriend? <laughs> yeah, that's it. Now they're fighting on the ground next to the cop car. This literally looks like they're just, it doesn't look like actual. What was that? <laughs> That was the worst headbutt I've ever seen. <laughs> the wimpiest, worst headbutt I think I've ever seen in my life. That's great. <laughs> oh my God, that's funny. Where'd these guns come from? We only got like less than 20 minutes left. Of this. We got less than 20 minutes left of this movie. What is this movie? What am I watching? The greatest movie, of, the greatest horror movie. The greatest time. horror movie of all time, ladies and gentlemen. Listen, Exorcist, pff, please. No, no, no. It's Exorcist, it's no. Original Halloween, no. Black Christmas, no. Rosemary's Baby, pff, get the fuck out of here. No. This get the right fuck here. out. Yeah. Jason Goes to Hell is the creme de la creme. Of Absolutely. If anybody says that Rosemary's, oh, you know, if anybody says that Rosemary's Baby, The Exorcist, fuck you. Get the fuck out. Get the fuck out. This is where it's at. <laughs> I'm telling you, man. Like, look at this. And now they're going to make it. Like, it's just so. Ooh. Oh, he's down. Some weird makeout things going on right now. I know. And then here, this is this. Deputy's got the the Letterman. I, I don't even know his name. What the fuck's his name? I just call him the Letterman guy because he's in this jacket. Oh, he's got some acrobatics. How the fuck would you be able to do that? I think it's possible. Ah, well, it's possible, but no, like basically, what we're watching is just a bunch of zombies. That's what this is. The final Friday is essentially Jason zombies that come to life and terrorize. Crystal Lake and its town or or what have you. That That is what this movie is. Why is that guy taking such a shit stance? <laughs> Look at the cop. He comes up the stairs and he takes a stance like he's like he's sitting on the toilet. <laughs> like, an, like he's fucking on the toilet. He's like full. But it's 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 his knees. He's like totally like he's he's totally committed to it. he's like mm, he's got his knees down. Like he's gonna mm, he's gonna like, crunch oh. one out. <laughs> <laughs> Crunch it out, baby. Crunch it out. That's uh, Steven, by the way. The character's name. This is Sheriff Barker before he was Sheriff Barker. <laughs> He's alive. You can't even shoot him. You can't even shoot him. So what is the moral of this fucking movie that you just, you don't, you, you can't, you can't kill the boogeyman? Is that what this is? Now we're at Crystal Lake Diner. Yep, yep, yep. Now, is this supposed to be the same? Right there. You hang it right there. This is one of the 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 Judd sisters here. (laughs) 
Uh, they were a thing in the 90s. Man. They were huge in the 90s. Yep. Not Ashley Judd, folks. Her her her, her other two. Uh, Ashley Judd and... Winona and... Damn, there's one more that was a singer. Winona Ashley. and... Yeah, Winona Judd, but they were, I think their mom was a singer, right? The mom, the mom, the mom, yeah. And then Ashley became an actress. That's right. That, that's, their, that's their younger sister. Yeah. Yeah. There's a few movies that she's in that she's like, yeah, she's on point. Ashley Judd? Oh, yeah, she's very pretty. Yep. Yeah, she's a good-looking girl. Well, girl, I mean, she's probably in her 50s now, but... Ah, here it comes! She took the... Oh, she, oh we're watching a POV of the bullet. Calm down, Winona! Calm down! <laughs> what the hell happened? Did you just faint or something? Look at this. So this is like technically this is Jason Voorhees. This yeah. guy here is actually Jason Voorhees. So should we include there's a question for the chat room. Should we include all the people that played zombie Jason in Jason Goes to Hell? Should we include them in people that have played Jason Voorhees? You know, I'm just saying from a certain point of view, if you want to Obi-Wan Kenobi it, should we include them? Technically, they were Jason. Or the, the embodiment, the manifestation of uh, Jason. See, oh, I am red, so out to lunch. Linda Hamilton right now. Yeah, totally. This is, is a total... I'm so out to lunch, I still thought that this woman should be without pants. That's that's how out to lunch I am right now. I, I, I totally missed where she was able to put on jeans. Yeah. Daisy McMillan says, Sure. Jonathan Ball says, technically, yes. Lord, wow. So some people are saying yes. Wow. I thought it was going to be a hard no from everybody. I mean, it is Jason from a certain point of view. Well, from a certain point of view. The Spiral yeah. Sky Project says it's Jason's soul and consciousness. So I'm just saying that might be a good social media post. <laughs> Oh, through the window. Oh, it's so lame without Jason. But technically, that's Jason going through the window. Zombie Jason. Oh! Where's that light coming from? Oh, it's an emergency light in the actual Her diner. death is funny with the elbow to the mouth and her face caving in. I don't I know. Remember, I remember we were laughing at that. Robert Thidoff says, never. Michael King says, this film, man. And, and also says, no. So, so it's kind of split right now, though not a lot of people have chimed in, but there were there are some people that are watching that are in the chat room right now who think that the, the, the people playing zombie Jason in this movie should be considered part of the people that have played Jason Voorhees. Here's your uh, next McCray, McCray Live. But see, technically, see, I would be in the camp of no. And the reason why I'd be the camp of no is because they're not wearing the hockey mask. They're not walking around in the in the outfit. They're not they're not actually Jason Jason. I know, I'm like way behind you, but... You are? Well, right now, the blonde uh, who's in pants now is running outside. The Letterman guy still fucking alive. Does he die in this movie? If he doesn't die, I'll be disappointed. Now he's coming outside and he's like, where are you going, bitch? No, he didn't say that, but that's what he's thinking. We're going to get to the point. They didn't cut the uh, the girl, the redhead, the, the, the one that I like. They didn't cut her head or her skull getting crushed in my version. You see her... And the blood popping. Oh, out. I didn't I didn't see that here. <laughs> but who cares? It's like when people ask me, do you think the producer's cut is better than the theatrical cut of Halloween six? No. I mean listen, is the producer's cut better in the sense of that it gives us more context to certain things and you get a little more Loomis and, and sure, because it was sort of what was always intended and it, it fleshes out a few things that might seem a little thin or unfinished in the theatrical cut. Sure. But it's still the same fucking story. Michael, I mean, I think in the producer's cut, Michael switches outfits with Dr. Wynn, walks off into the ether with the fucking fedora and, and a briefcase. I mean, are, are, how is that better? Michael's walking off. You know, you see his silhouette and he turns and you see like his silhouette. He's got the, like, this is, this is absurd. It's absurd. So no, you know, and I think I would feel the same way about this. Well, but watch the unrated cut. Why? For more blood and guts? Okay. But it's still, it's the same thing. It's the same thing. 
not as good though as my idea that I talked about with you off off when we went off the air last week because I, I do think it would change the dynamic of H2O dramatically had Donald Pleasance not passed away and he was in good health like Chris and Michael Myers health to be able to be a part of H2O I, it changes H2O like it really it it may even elevate H2O to being one of the best sequels if you're getting the whole band back together again. You got Donald Pleasance, Jamie Lee Curtis, Carpenter attached to it, Deborah Hill attached to it. Fuck you, and which they weren't, you but yeah. But I'm just saying, you yeah. may have gotten that. You that may have happened. Like if Pleasance came on and uh, Curtis is on and Hill's like, you know what? Yeah, what the fuck? Why not? Hill could have probably convinced Carpenter to do it. Uh, at that point, and well, he, you also get a much younger Nick Castle who may have might consider saying, you know what, fuck it, why not? You know what I mean? La, la, la. Uh, sorry, sorry to interrupt, but I, I, I the fucking sword so throws it and the it's like something supernatural that goes into her hand. I cannot help but think of Sheriff Barker from Halloween and Halloween Kills when I look at this guy with the cowboy hat. <sighs> yeah, I know. I'm trying to get Dave to do a video of Loomis and H2O. How much that would have. How much well, that th but changed. that for me, for that to change, you'd have to have Loomis. You'd also have to have no disrespect to Chris Duran. Either you have him in it and you direct him to behave differently or you get a different actor to play Michael Myers. I was never a fan of Chris Duran's portrayal of the shape. Uh, and you also have to have uh, a better mask. I mean, there's there's other things in there, um, but. Would it have made it better? Yeah. But I've yet to watch a movie that I think is already terrible and then watch like a director's cut or a or an unrated cut and then all of a sudden it's so much better. No, I mean if it's the same movie, it's the same movie. I've I've never that I don't think it would have been the same though if Loomis is alive. You would have a different story because like I said, I think you would have this you would have this I think you'd probably have this dramatic ending where you get Lori and Loomis together again to confront michael yeah and, well and you'd write a completely different movie yeah yeah it'd be a different movie that's right <laughs> it'd be a different movie that's right yeah but uh but outside of that um because i don't like loathe h2o or anything but out of the movies that i don't like like really just think they're crap i've never seen an extended cut of a movie that i thought was already crap and it's made it and, and it's like wow this is so much better oh i love this movie now no no it's a crap movie now you're just giving me more of an extension of crap i've watched movies that i really like and then watch their director's cut and i like them more because you're giving me more of what i already like um but I've yet to watch a movie that is that is really just awful and then watch no, like an unrated cut and think, oh, this is so great. I wouldn't say that um, that H2O with Loomis in it would have outdone the original film. No, but H2O with Loomis in it molded into a different type of story um, could have made that trilogy complete between could've. one, two, and that in H2O. Would've. If Mustafa Akkad didn't get in the way. Exactly. And Carpenter was allowed to do his thing and everybody yeah. was on board. To say, hey, we're here to do one last film. Ooh. Like I said, you could have even gotten Nick Castle to play Michael again because it's you're talking 20 years ago. Uh, it's a totally different Nick Castle at that time. So now this girl has been stabbed. They're taking the baby. So what? Is the baby supposed to be the sacrifice? Like they want to put Jason's whatever, his essence um, and his soul into the baby to have him reborn essentially? I'm more focused on my what if from H two O than I am this movie. Is 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 that what's I don't know it's going on here? Like, look at this. Oh, oh. See, they should have like with a machete like that. They should have had his head pop up, and his head just kind of like roll onto the ground or whatever. I thought. Oh, there it is. There it is. There it is. And that's him like coming out that's him coming like this is absurd think back to like friday the 13th one two three look what the fuck is this what I told is you. that that's supposed to be jason like what is this so whatever makes jason jason this is it this right here this little demon creature <laughs> That's what makes Jason Jason. Incestual moment in horror movie history. It's like a gremlin. <laughs> yum, yum. Yum, yum. Like, what the fuck is going on? 
I mean, as far as puppeteering goes and creating this, very cool because it's legit. Well, like it's oh, of course, of course, it's cool. Oh, Jason. right! I remember. Oh, now he's reborn. And I think you actually, the actress that, pl I remember this now, the actress that played her was mortified because they never told them. Oh, she was never, never told that they were going to do that. And she felt violated, even though obviously it didn't, it didn't really happen. The mere suggestion of it, she felt violated by it. No. Can't say it, blame her. No, just, into her vagina. Why can't he go back into her? And there he is. He's back. The man behind the mask. Oh, he's out of control, but he's back. But how is he back? I don't get it. How how did he suddenly come back? Only through a Voorhees will he be reborn. Didn't you listen? <sighs> yeah, but how did he come back that fucking quickly? <laughs> so it was a fast pregnancy, man. <sighs> Holy shit. He went from zero to the third tribe master in a blink of an eye. So you mean to tell me that, I mean, so the whole only through a Voorhees will he be re... But what, she... How did he fucking like, what the fuck is going on? I don't know. And the Letterman guy is still alive. Of course he is. <laughs> and this sword, what is this dagger? What is this? The sword in the stone. It's, the sword. It's a for horror movies. Oh, fuck. Like, and Kane Hodder is. Poor Kane. Now, now, but when you look at Kane, again, compared to the guy he's fighting, see how they're like, they're relatively the, the same size. You know what I mean? Die! Ah, die! Ah! This is, but, well, it's just so, this is, oh yeah, and then he dies. I remember this now, and it's it's outside here where the fucking like I just what the fuck? Please kill this man, kill this man already. It's his head on the on the on the rock. I can hear your film. It's it's crazy. I can hear the uh, the dialogue on your side. Not enough, or I mean, I got it almost muted. Yeah, I don't know why. That's very strange. I don't know why I can hear it. Like it's I can. It sounds really loud. Anyway, whatever. He's hitting him with a shovel now, and then he stops the shovel. Dying is <laughs> impossible. Yeah. Jason's picking him up. What the hell is he wearing? Jason, and does Jason what? have a belt? Jason doesn't have a belt, does he? No, he doesn't. Okay. I thought Jason had a belt for a minute. And he's even got himself a belt. Yes. Uh, he's, wearing just... a... <laughs> he's wearing a belt. No, is he? Yes, he's wearing a belt. He got it from Miyagi. No. Daniel asked him for a belt. Yeah, he, 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 is he, he wearing a, he's not wearing a belt. Come on. Is he? He is. He's wearing a belt. Jason's wearing a belt. Here it comes. Here it comes. The niece. The niece is going to kill Jason. There it is. The niece. Oh, through the heart. It's like Ghostbuster shit, right? How? Yeah, I mean, Jason and the and the Letterman Jack guy are still fighting. Oh, I fucking I'm at the point where the shit is shooting out. There's like lightning. Tell me when Freddy grabs the mask because I'm like I'm watching the director whatever cut. I'm so far behind you right now. Yeah, him and this dude are like. Oh shit! Well, I mean, like, does Freddy like, laugh in this movie? <laughs> That's what I'm He's watching. punching him in the face. You can see all like the the essence, the red spirit right now. And she's going after it. She's coming. Oh, right. Oh, further into his heart. Into his heart. Into his heart. And now everything's like, this is such a bad. This is how you end, Jason. No, 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 no. And now what are all these like things coming? I'm expecting like his fucking shirt to rip open and see like all the souls. Oh no, of course we got all the, the, the hands that are coming out and like, but if this wasn't Friday the 13th and this was just a, some creature feature fucking movie, uh, then, you know, it might be worth watching. Do you know what I mean? But this is just, holy shit. 
the Letterman guy is like, does he survive? I'm going to be pissed if he survives. I've been wanting him to die since I, I saw him first on, on screen. And Jason right now is being... Now, who are these people that are pulling Jason to hell? Who, who are these hands? Just like goblins, ghouls? Satan's helpers. Satan's helpers? That's what this is? All right. Well, in a moment here, because I'm, I'm a little bit ahead of you, we're about to see Freddy's glove here in a second pop up. Look at these effects. What is this? This, this, is, this isn't industrial light and magic. <laughs> <laughs> what is going on? Fortunately, your Letterman's jacket survives. Oh, and they're making out. He gets this girl. Get out. Then again, I guess if you go through something like that with a girl, I mean, yeah, you're bound to get a little something. So now I'm at the point where we see the sun. I believe it looks like a sun, almost looks like a sunset. Uh, could be a sunrise though. And they're they're walking off together, arm in arm. We did it. We defeated Jason Voorhees. What a terrible, lackluster, you know, like, oh, it, that, that's a good shot, though. It's, it's a good shot. It really is. It's, it's a good shot, though, of, of uh, them going off in the sunset. Here we go. Here it comes. Jason's mask. The, the wind is blowing the dirt. Let's fucking turn this up so you guys can hear this shit. Oh, a dog. Now, whose dog is this? Just some random fucking wild dog? It's a cool shot. I mean, like I said, Here me and my comes. buddy were geeking out when we saw this in theaters. And it was probably the only thing we talked about. Oh, so cool to see pretty grab Jesus. For sure. Now, now, watch his knives, though. The knives kind of bend and look almost plasticky, in my opinion. There it is. See how they kind of... They kind of... That's totally not Robert Anglin. No, it's Kane. No, I mean in terms of the laugh. Yeah, I see what you're saying. Oh, and that's no. it. Definitely. Not. That is not Robert Anglin. Which Holy they should have. Shit. I got Robert to, to just at least do the voiceover of the laugh. Yeah, or just fuck. Uh, yeah, because it's New Line. So why didn't they yeah. just fucking go into the? Exactly. It's they, new line. they didn't even have to get Robert to do it. They could have just gone into their archives. archives get a laugh. Now, you would have had to have paid Robert for sure, which maybe that's why they didn't want to do that. Uh, you would have had to have paid him. Um, but they could have just taken a soundbite from one of their earlier films and just, you know, paid him. Here's, you know, whatever, and, and just use that. Um, but maybe they just didn't want to pay him. That's probably it. That's probably it. Uh, folks, that is Jason Goes to Hell, Friday the 13th, Part 9. Obviously, it wasn't called Friday the 13th, Part 9, because New Line had it, and Paramount had the rights to the title Friday the 13th. That is why it is called Jason Goes to Hell and Jason X, um, uh, and why the Friday the 13th title ended with, uh, well, before the remake, ended with um, uh, Jason Takes Manhattan, Friday the 13th, Part 8. Um, holy snap and crap. Uh, this is um, just as bad as Freddy's Dead. I mean, it's they're, they're both terrible movies. And um, I mean, like I said, at least uh, Freddy's Dead had Jason or had Freddy in it. But this is just, this is mind-numbingly bad. I mean, I, I, again, I haven't seen it in a long time, but watching it here with you now uh, yeah i mean i'm i'm watching this, i'm like this is terrible it's a terrible movie it's ter like this is how you end this is how you end it like why didn't they just fucking say you know what let's just go make a fucking camp movie and you know yeah, we've already done that yeah but we're going to have fucking jason zombies and shit what the fuck i don't know you know what would have been cooler and it wouldn't have saved the film that once you eat jason <laughs> you <laughs> You're even saying I that. Know. <laughs> I know. This is what I'm saying. Like the fact that I have to even use these words, but 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 maybe once you <laughs> eat Jason. <laughs> you know, you you yeah. once you eat him, um maybe something happens and you you and you don't because no. in a movie like this. It wouldn't be absurd 
because it's so absurd to begin with, it wouldn't be absurd to then have the people who consume him to become him. Like in look as well. Like, so maybe they, maybe they don't look exactly like him where they have like the hockey mask, but maybe they suddenly look like how Jason looks without the mask on, right? So they have like, you know, they look kind of like him a bit. Like that's what they should have done. Like from the get go, you know what I mean? And that would not have been out of place in this fucking stupid movie. Uh, that would have been totally believable. I, and, and if anybody would have been like, oh, come on, no. What do, you, what do you mean, oh, come on, no? The whole thing is just absurd, so why not just go that far? Anyway, holy yeah. shit. What an awful, awful fucking movie. Hey, let's go over to, uh, I, there were some super chats that came in earlier. I think I got them, oh, uh, Mo, though. Uh, but let me just double check uh, and see. Uh, make sure I didn't Bot miss it. I think the reason why they couldn't use Friday the 13th name in the title is it was a copyright thing, right? Right, yes. New Line uh, had the rights to this and Paramount had the rights to the title Friday the 13th. So they had to call it Jason Goes to Hell the final Friday. They had to be sort of cute with the way they, uh, they did that. Uh, I think I did get most of it. The Spiral Sky Project sent in $2 and says, Kane Hodder loses balance in the jungle gym scene. I didn't notice that, but I'll take your word for it. Matthew Foresi sends in $1.99 and says, Chris Duran felt like a copycat killer. Um, yeah, I never, I don't, didn't, I just don't, he, did, he just wasn't Michael to me. I don't know. Just H2O overall, I don't particularly like. Um, all right. So... Funny, because Nick says, I, I when I watch this franchise, I always skip over to five, eight, and nine. I love five. Man, Friday 13th, New Roy, oh, Roy, 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 I would some. watch five over Jason Goes to Hell 50,000 times over. 100%. 100%. 100%. Five Roy, is man. way better than Jason Goes to Hell. Yeah. Five, five is a gamble. And I get the gamble that they took. I mean, but you still keep the story of Tommy Jarvis in there. Who yep. is it? You know, you're continuing his story. Uh, yeah. Yes, it's not Jason. It's a copycat killer. That's a, that's a gamble. But as I said, uh, I, I liked the creative decisions they that they did with it. And it still feels like a Friday the 13th film. I understand it's Roy Burns. but And actually, I will say this. Five has some of the cr most creative kills of the franchise. Yes. Uh, with what they did with Roy uh, killing people. And I think it's one of the coolest masks with the blue, uh, blue yep. stripes. Yeah, but and there's always Deborah Voorhees. I'm already on that one, just like with Halloween three. Not many people are fans. And if all else fails, you watch it for Deborah Voorhees. That <laughs> boobs, the big old boobs. Uh, the horror counselor says uh, it would have been good a, a good ending to the franchise if we see Alice at Crystal Lake as she's looking out to the lake and smiling with the music from the OG ending, except this time, no Jason. Well, that would have been cool. That would not have been, that would not have saved this movie. If you had the same movie, but just that ending, well, maybe the ending would have been nice. That would have been cool. But the, no, you would have had to have written a completely different film. It wouldn't have saved the movie. No, not at all. You would have had to have written a movie bringing back Adrian King and and then bring it full circle about how maybe she's got to go back to Crystal Lake because of for whatever reason and then you you know you t she actually survived the fucking screwdriver thing to the head we you know we find that out that she actually survived you know whatever the case is right um but suddenly cutting away from the absurdity of what we've seen to what you're talking about which is cool um would have felt very out of place it would have felt like a attack on I think this movie ended in the way that it should have ended. Uh, completely ridiculous and dumb. <laughs> you know, like, I mean, you know, your, your, your ending is too smart <laughs> for, for this movie. Um, in all fairness. You would bring her back. You would, almost, you would need, or even Amy Steele for that matter. You would need an entirely different movie. Entirely and that's where, different. But I mean, like when, when I'm at the drawing table coming up with this, like I would have been like, can we not come up with a story to bring Amy back? Maybe conclude this with her. You know what I mean? Like we, we, we've got her character just kind of out there in the ethers right now. And she wasn't doing much at that time. So I'm quite confident she would have came back to the franchise, yeah. not for this particular movie, but a different movie surrounding her character to conclude. It would have been, that would have been one way to uh, ending off uh, this, this franchise. Right. 
Right. Yeah. And, you know, it's, it's, uh, you know, again, it's 1992, three. I mean, you know, horror actors or actors reprising their roles uh, wasn't a thing back then. You know, sometimes when actors get older, uh, maybe they, you know, there's a variety of things that happen. Some actors will bow out on their own choice because they lose interest in the industry or they don't like the the industry in general. Uh, they want to do other things. They have a family. They want to focus on their kids. They take up other things. They have other interests. And sometimes what happens is, is um, uh, or there there uh, th there's that side of it. There's also the side of actors' careers. You know, I mean, every actor who begins, every actor who starts out, does not start out to have a you know sub not subpar, but but you know, every actor who starts out wants to work and you know wants to end wherever it goes it goes right but it is such a competitive business i mean i can speak on this even on the voiceover side of things incredibly competitive there's a lot of people that can do what you do and you have to be brilliant not you know good kind of good you have to be brilliant you have to stand out and agents will tell you that managers will tell you that and because you know there's a saying in voiceover um one thing that a voiceover agent does not need is another voice. Um, so it comes down to what can you bring to the table in terms of your performances, your character, you know, everything that, that maybe we don't have on the roster or like, you know, what have you. Anyway, I'm going off on a tangent, but, but the point I'm making is, is that, you know, making it in show business is incredibly difficult. And, um, you know, most actors won't become Harrison Ford. Most actors won't become Meryl Streep. Th those are... I mean, very few. I mean, we see them all the time, you know, Pratt's and, 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 you know, I don't know, pick your, you know, um, Daniel Craig and Nicole Kim, you know, we see these people, but we have to remember there are hundreds of thousands of actors <laughs> that are working in Hollywood that are not multi-millionaires that are background or supporting characters or like, you know, whatever the case is. So, you know, but an actor will, you know, it's, it just, at that time, Amy Steele, I don't know what she was doing at that time or what Adrian King was doing. I know she distanced herself from the franchise because of the whole stalking thing. But now with conventions and pop culture and nostalgia, the older you get, the less you are in demand. That happens too. And a lot of these actors who were once horror icons in their own right in selective series become more accessible again. And re as they're older and their careers are sort of in the twilight, um, they begin to sort of, sort of revisit their careers more fondly and sort of maybe accept you know, their claim to fame, uh, more fondly. Whereas when you're, when you're in the thick of it, you know, you do a movie, an actor wants to work. An actor never wants to be typecast. They want to work. That doesn't mean that they don't appreciate being blessed if they are with a role or a certain role that, that they get known for, but an actor wants to work. If you're an actor, you are contract. Like myself as a voice actor, I'm, I'm, contract. So, so if I don't work, I don't get paid. So, you know, we actors, we want to work all the time. And, you know, as you get older, you may frown upon certain things. No, I don't want to be, no, oh God, everybody just, I don't want to be the Friday the 13th girl. You know, I want to work. I want to, you know, it, it, do other things, but there comes a point in your life when, you know, that changes and you grow and you look at your life, you look back at your career and, you know, that kind of stuff. So anyways, the point I'm making is this whole long thing is that maybe at that time, like I agree with what Tony said. I think it was, it would have been a, a really cool idea to bring back King or Steel or whatever, but maybe at that time it wasn't possible because they wouldn't have had an interest. You do it now? You do it now as they're much older. Steel, I don't even think, is in the business anymore. Adrian King is sort of barely there. You might find them looking at it a little more fondly because they're looking back at their careers and sort of there's like a level of acceptance that sort of comes over it. And they're like, you know what? It's okay, so I'm the Friday the 13th gal. All right, who cares? You know what I mean? And then they own it and you're more likely to get them. Uh, that's always possible too. So it, it could just be a matter of timing. Anyway, I'll shut up now. But uh, I find that shit fascinating and and uh, sort of the the. In this conversation, it didn't exist if Amy Steele had the mindset today, back then, in doing the sequels or follow up to part two. Yeah, we'd, be she, in an, we'd be in an entirely different franchise. 
Yeah, and, and didn't she say something like she wanted, like she was, she 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 would have returned, but she herself, I think, said something to the effect of, and I I'm t- totally could be out to lunch on this because I just watched Crystal Lake Memories like a couple of weeks ago because I had never seen it. I know I'm late to the party on this, um, but I think um, didn't she say something like she turned it down because she wanted to do other things, something yeah, to that I, effect. I, she even she she realizes it now. She wishes she, you know, had done it. You know what I mean? Because That's it probably, my point. she would have probably been the franchise's Lori Strode or Sydney. You know what I mean? She totally would yeah. have been. I mean, she's almost everyone's favorite final girl. I mean, I, I do get the Adrian King ones here and there, but a lot of people, in, in, in when I do the photos and stuff like that, everybody DMs me like, dude, I love Amy Steele. She's my favorite final girl. Yeah. Uh, she, she's usually. It, it, if this franchise is split when it comes to final girls, it's split between Adrian King and Amy Steele. It, yeah. It's you, know, you, you get the, you know, cr- you know, the, the chick from part three, I forget her name. Um, and you get, you know, occasionally you might get Megan, uh, from part six pop up yeah. from time, but primarily with most Friday fans, Adrian King or Amy Steele. And yeah. if Amy Steele had, you know, decided to go on with this franchise, we wouldn't even be sitting here having this discussion right now. I think it would have been entirely, it would have been totally different. It would have been very interesting to see if she had done part three, what the story of part three would have been and how that would have transformed the rest of the series. Because if you think that Amy Steele would have been in part three, just replacing Chris, you may be mistaken. A different movie. I, I think it would have been a totally different film. Not necessarily, not necessarily different in the sense of that Jason doesn't get his mask. Maybe, maybe not. But in terms of the story, uh, and then what would a part four? I mean, you may have had a very different Friday the Thirteenth series. But to my point, yeah, she she you know, you she didn't want to get typecast, right? You know. But now, I mean, she's in her sixties now, and and looking she- back. Like kind of like, damn, I wish I had. You yeah, know I mean? because you you're older, and and it is you know it's a reality of the business. I hate to say this, but it is a reality of the business, and it it you know it shouldn't be, but it is unfortunately because of the way it's it's you know the way it is. It is much harder for women to maintain the longevity of a career than it is for a man, and and I'm not saying it should be like that. It shouldn't be, but unfortunately, women are you know, what you look like and how you look, um, is, uh, is a big part of it. Um, and, and we did part two, this franchise was not where it is today. You know what I mean? With the fan base and shit. who know? Yeah. I don't know where it would be. I, I don't know when she completed part two and they offered her to, you know, they, they yeah. started to talk about doing part three. She was, she probably didn't even think that this franchise was going to become what it ultimately became. Nobody ever does. No one did. You yeah, know what I mean? Nobody so ever does. Back in hindsight, like, fuck, if I that's only it. had, it changes everything. Uh, well, a hundred percent. And, but you never know that. Like you just, you don't know that, you know, um, uh, nobody knows, you know, what, what is going to happen. I mean, <laughs> Hockey mask would have came in too. I agree with you. I, but I think you would have gotten the sack maybe a little bit longer because it would have been recognizable for Gene's character and then maybe have a moment where the sack comes off and he gets the mask. Maybe. Maybe. I mean, it's it's entirely possible. It's entirely possible. But it's it's a tough it's a tough industry for women, especially. You know, and and um, uh, and I don't say that as any sort of woke thing. I say that as somebody who's you know spent twenty years in the business myself. Yeah, no, and and I can see even in voiceover, uh, it's tough for women in voiceover. Um, you would think you 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 might think that's kind of funny because it's voice acting and you're behind a microphone, but believe it or not, it can it can be it, it can be tough. Um, um, I mean, it's not, it's not identical, but it is, you know, it is there. And again, and I don't say that in a, you know, a woke way. I say that in a reality of the industry. I mean, women are sexualized and, and, you know, uh, you know, if you get fat, I mean, you know, you know what I mean? And it's not so the same. For, I mean, not in the sense that you would ever see like a fat James Bond, uh, but I just mean men, men have it a little easier as they get older. Um, and it can be tougher for women, unfortunately. How um, dare you say such things, Dave McRae? Yeah, and, and I, I don't say that as I condone it. I say that as just a reality of the industry. And any woman actress who's of a seasoned age would would tell you that, would say, yeah. I mean, it's it's 
it, 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 it's I'm as you get to. older, it's, it's harder. It's, it's because especially, especially if you are identified if, or if part of the lure, and maybe you are a really good actress, maybe you are, but part of it, you are also, you know, very easy on the eyes. I mean, you know, if you look at like Natalie Portman or, or, you know, whoever, I mean, if you don't, you know, these are people that, that, that are good actors. Um, but as they age can, can be, um, you know, I mean, again, I don't, I'm not, I don't condone it. I'm just saying it's, it's a reality of the business. Uh, it, it's unfortunate. It's harder for women as they get older than it is for men. Um, so to do something beyond something fucking from the Renaissance, man. It just seems like that movie, that girl is like in every like film that's like in the Victorian era. Like, Natalie what? Portman. No, Kira Knightley. Oh, Kira Knightley. Yeah. She's attractive too. She's uh, but she just does all these like fucking Victorian period pieces kind of stuff. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. I'm like, damn girl, get back to doing shit like Domino. That was a fucking movie. Domino was a great movie. Yeah. Domino was a great movie. Um, but anyway, uh, the point I was making of course is, is that I, I, a lot of actors, uh, who are either not in the business anymore or didn't achieve, uh, career heights that maybe they wanted to, and they sort of just became a character actor or just kind of was in the business every now and then. And you see a lot of these types of actors at conventions and, and, and they get, and you know, conventions have made them very accessible. Um, and so it's kind of fun to sort of see that. And now I think if somebody came to the table and said, and I, I, I don't know for sure, but if somebody came to the table and said, Amy Steele, Adrian King, we want to get you guys back in a Friday the 13th film. Oh, they would totally do. I have a feeling that they would say yes. A high, way higher probability now than 30 years ago. And if you want to ignite this franchise, that would be the way to do it. To get fans going like, wait, what? We're getting Adrian King and Amy Steele back? Fuck yeah. That. Why not? Uh, Nick sends in $5 and says, DNT, let's say the Halloween theme was nominated for best original score in 79, in which Superman was really up for it. Which John you want to see win? Uh, oh, Superman, I think. Well, Superman came out in 77. Well, Superman, no, the original Superman came out in 78. Oh, it and came out the I believe right. so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Superman with Star Wars. Yeah, I think, uh, does, I mean, when I listen, uh, the Halloween theme is great, but if we're talking, if it's going up against the Superman theme in terms of what should be, you know, win best theme of a movie, um, I would probably still say um, the Superman theme. I, I mean, they're very different, right? You know, you're really comparing apples and oranges, but the again, and I always say this to fans, what are we measuring? What's our measuring stick? You know, what's better, this or this? Well, what are we measuring? Especially when you're asking me something that's very apples and oranges. You know, if you ask me to compare, uh, you know, Michael's masks, well, that's, that's, that, you know, we can do that without saying what's our measuring stick because our measuring stick is usually, you know, the original mask, right? But if you say something like, what's oh, better? He really loves the resurrection mask better right. than the original. Who, who yeah. does, me? Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, I love it. It's fantastic. It's great. It's the best it's, mask. He won't admit, he won't admit it out. <laughs> um, but if we say something like, "What do you like better, uh, the um, Michael in part uh, two or Jason in part th you know six or something?" It's, it's like, well, what? I mean, what's our measuring stick? Like, how are we? You know. So I would say to this, when I. The Halloween theme is iconic. One of the most iconic themes, uh, you know, of all time. And I've actually held the original recording in my hand. I've told this before, but when I had dinner at Mickey Ablonz's house with him and his wife and his, and his son, um, it was really cool. He went upstairs, he came downstairs and he opened this reel and I held it in my hands, the original recording of the Halloween theme. The Halloween theme is one of the most iconic themes in the history of motion pictures, period. I mean, it is. But when I think of how the Superman theme is so triumphant, it's so uh, uh, inspiring and uplifting and, and fucking like, yeah, let's fucking do this, woo! You know what I'm saying? It, it, it's hard to not give the, the Oscar to that film. Um, but it would, be dep it would depend on what we're measuring it against, right? You know, what, you know, I don't know. But, but uh, 
uh, I have the original uh, recording too. Of the, when I say that now, I don't mean the actual master copy. I'm yeah. saying the vinyl copy. The vinyl you, copy. You hear in the movie and not the digital CD version right. of it. Because you guys who don't know, my original vinyl of Halloween is what you hear in the film. Like the original right. Halloween film, like if you were watching on VHS. I don't think it's been changed digitally. I haven't watched that in a minute. No, I don't think so. No. Uh, no. But if you listen to the CD version of Halloween Steam from the original soundtrack or the digital version like on Spotify or iTunes, it's different. There's a huge difference between the two uh, recordings. And I, what I have is probably what Dave held in his hand on the movie. Oh, it was, it was incredible. I mean... You know, first of all, again, I mean, shout out to the Ablons family. I mean, they're 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 so kind, and and uh, you know, I developed a um, relationship with them because when I was talking to Erwin Ablons at the 40th anniversary convention, uh, he found out who I was as a as a voice actor, and he said his granddaughter. Um, was a huge voiceover fan. No, loves voice acting and cartoons and all that kind of stuff and asked if I would speak to her uh, about that. And I was like, yeah, for sure. Anyway, that's the, so we got in touch and then of course I met Mickey and I treated them to uh, the Voice Arts Awards that year uh, actually, which was a lot of fun. And anyway, so very nice people. And when I was hanging out with them, like I said, he, he brought down the original, like reel to reel recording of the Halloween theme. And it was so cool because, you know, there it is in my hand. I'm looking at it. We obviously did not have a reel to play it. Um, but if we did, you would have heard the, the, the master recording of the Halloween theme. And the fact that like, I'm like, I'm sitting there, and the first thing that's running through my head is, I wonder Run how much this is. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I made that joke too. I'm like, I'm like, you know, I could just uh, under the arm and you know dash like you know a football player. Um, but but uh, in you know in my mind, the first thing that popped into my head was, I wonder how much this is worth. You know, the, it really is priceless. I mean, the original master recording. And by the way, you you can there's a video on my channel. If you just YouTube Dave McRae, Mickey Yablons or Yablons or whatever, it should come up. There's a video on my channel where I'm showing it because uh, I got my girlfriend to take a video and Mickey's in it as well. And and because uh, uh, I gave him Every horror movie like Hall of Fame one day or something like that. That it deserves to be in that. Oh, and I mean, he's going to hold on to that like it's nobody's business. And he also gave me not gave me, showed me an original shooting script uh, of the original Halloween. So it's not, it, 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 it has like all of the, it's kind of like a, a, a script that, that the DP would have. So maybe Cundy had it, I don't know. But, but it was original, sh so it had the dialogue, but it also had like the camera action and all that kind of shit on it. And um, that's when I learned that I think Judith's, I'd have to double check, but when I was reading the opening of it, I'm sitting there at the table and I'm kind of, you know, going through it because, you know, obviously I can't take it with me and we're only there for a certain amount of time. So I took a couple of photos and that's when I learned that Judith's name, I think, I stand to be corrected, but I think Judith's name in the script, at least in the shooting script, at least the script that I was holding, which would have been obviously maybe an early script, her name, with a, her name I think was like Samantha or something like that. It, it was something that was not... Judith. And I remember that standing out to me. And I remember thinking, oh, that's so interesting. It's not Judith. It was something like that. Um, but yeah, I was like that master reel. I'm sitting there and I'm like, I mean, Jesus, how much? And of course he's going to hang on to that fucking thing. Are you crazy? I mean, and who knows what else he had locked away from his dad that, uh, that he hasn't showed me. And who knows what else his dad has as well. Uh, who's a, such a uh, sweetheart of a man too? Such a such a really nice, genuine family. And his wife, shout out to his wife, Mickey's wife, Isabella, or is it? I think it's Isabella. Maybe it's Isabel, um, a French uh, French lady who who's just incredibly nice. Who made a killer dinner. Uh, it was it was awesome. Like it had, we had so so much. It was it was just great. So it was a really cool evening, an evening I'll never forget, of course. And just a very kind uh, family. And and um, but yeah, to have that master. Oh my god, my god. Like just it's so it, like I mean that's like having an original master of like the Jaws theme. You know, it's like ah, ah, 
eh, I don't know what to do with it. Like, you know, like I was so worried I was going to like bend it or something, you know? It was so cool. But anyway, uh, I don't know how we got onto that. I guess we were talking about original something or other. Um, okay, so uh, Super Chat comes in from... Uh, Michael Myers Strode fan sends in $5, says, Dave, what's the best John Carpenter comedy? Tony, what's your favorite John Carpenter romance? Uh, well, John Carpenter hasn't really done comedy. I mean, I know there's memoirs of an invisible man with Chevy Chase, but I mean, you know, I'm not going to just pick that because it's like the only, co- he, he has had comedy, you know, funny bits in his movies. I mean, they live, there's some funny lines, but in terms of full out outright comedy film, Carpenter hasn't hasn't really done one, so I don't fucking the only, know. The only thing close to romance that I can think of that he did is he did he did direct the Elvis movie with Kurt Russell, mm-hmm. which had a love story between Elvis and Priscilla. Yeah, um, and that's as close as I was going to joke and say they live, but you know, like, no, yeah. I mean, like in all seriousness, I, I can't think of any romance that that's as close to romance as I can think that Carpenter did would be the Elvis movie. Yeah. Yeah, it, it would have had to have been something. Yeah, I don't know. Um, but he hey, hasn't really done one. Next question, because I saw it, and it's and it's a high, it's a uh, it's a nice super chat. Sure, but does, is this going to have spoilers in it? If it is, because I I'm going to have to pull out. Okay, microphone. well let me just see here. I kind of dodged it once I saw Halloween Kills and was scrolled right past it because I still have not seen the trailer. No, there's n- no spoilers. Think. There's okay. no spoilers. So uh, let me get the one above it because there was, I think, a super... Did I get this? I did. Okay. Okay. So DreedMem77 sends in a very generous super chat. Thank you very much, buddy. And says, Dave, Tony, I'm worried about Halloween kills as you've said that the body count will be quite high. Yeah, that's not a spoiler. I mean, that's, you know, with a, with a movie name like... <laughs> yeah, I- I- exactly. Uh, that has me thinking that I there will... I be- to go balls to the walls in this movie and nothing less. You would be right. Uh, that has me thinking that there will be a shortage of suspense, which I think is what makes Michael Myers more frightening. What are your thoughts? Well, uh, I agree with you. I know Tony does too. Um, I will say this. Um, you know, I, I have read the script to Halloween Kills. I have. I uh, know a, a couple of people uh, that have seen the movie that are very connected to the Halloween uh, space that, that have seen it. Um, mm-hmm. And I can tell you, now I haven't seen it, but I can tell you that when Christopher Nelson uh, says that the trailer, yes, does give away things, but it's only the tip of the iceberg. Yeah, I mean, if you're worried that you've seen everything in Halloween Kills, you've in the trailer, you've seen nothing. <laughs> I mean, this movie, from what I am hearing, is so balls to the wall nuts, as Which Tony I'm- just said. With because we've never gotten that with a Michael film, and it's kind of a throwback to 80s horror. You know what I mean? Like, that's what 80s horror was. It's boss of the wall, fucking body count. But we've never actually seen Michael go. And I, if anything, the only thing I want to see, I wanted to see Michael go batshit crazy. Just fucking lose it. Just like batshit fucking crazy, you know, and I'm fine with that. Yeah, and that's kind of where I am now. Like, I mean, I mean, obviously, we know my you know, what uh, the, the original intent of the character and what makes him all that. And, and, but it's, you know, I'm, I'm not, I'm not naive in thinking that suddenly they're going to be doing that. They, they need to have more of a general appeal. It's 2021. Uh, you are going to get, I, I, I can tell you this, and this isn't a spoiler. I mean, the trailer sets you up for it. You're going to get a fucking balls to the wall, wild, crazy, fucking insane. I mean, this is what you're going to get. It's called Halloween Kills. Where I come in and what I want to see is I'm curious, are they going to balance it with some suspense and stalking? Now, I don't know how that's going to feel or whether they're going to have time to do that, but part of Michael's MO is he's a predator. He stalks, he waits, he lurks. You know, are we going to get a great, you know, chase scene like in Halloween 2 when he steps up behind the building and Lori's running up to the, the door. Help me. Are we going to get, you know, the stalking scene in part one where he's walking across the street? Are we going to get like what we were almost got in H18, but then was cut too short, the shape stalks Allison? Um, but are we going to get more of him emerging from the darkness? And, and I understand that you can't necessarily pepper that throughout the movie because it's a different kind of movie. This is probably the most Jason Voorhees you will ever see. I hate to say it. That's not a spoiler. 
of a third of a three part story. Right, right. I mean, it's 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 a you know, it is going to be this. I'm just curious to see if they're going to have some balance. That that's what I'm curious, and I hope that they do. I hope they don't completely reinvent who he is. Um, and because I think it's important that you have that nuance there, uh, but we'll see. And, and I have a feeling I'm going to like this movie better than I liked H18 because I don't have any expectations that they're going to do what I think that they should have done. So I can just sit back and watch it for what it is. I'll just watch, I'll just watch it for, I'll just check out, I'll check my mind out, watch it for what it is and just enjoy the candy, you know, enjoy the icing, enjoy the ride. I just have that feeling. I just have that feeling. So you know, are they bringing back the lockdowns up there? Because I know they're starting to do some of that around in our, not like Georgia, but like in some states, they're starting to do that. And I don't know if this is a beginning domino effect of what's about to go down. And yeah, beginning. not yet. Not yet. I mean, we're just you starting just to. Came out. <laughs> like, Sorry? You guys just came out of it. Yeah. Well, we, I, I was just going to say that we, we've just reopened. The theaters up here have only been open for like three weeks. So I'm hoping not. But you never yeah. know. Uh, sweet. I'm to watch it uh, on some streaming service. I have a feeling that's the route I'm going to That watch. may happen. If Halloween kills, if the release date gets delayed, uh, or, or excuse me, if, if, if there, we go into another lockdown, I don't think you're going to see the movie get delayed. I think wow. you'll just see it go to POVD, uh, PO, PVOD completely. You'll have to like, pay 20 bucks to rent it on iTunes. For sure. Something. For sure. Maybe even 30. That I, I would. Like, there's like, I haven't done that. Like I, I blindly bought um, a quiet place because it was available to buy. It was, you know, and it was like twenty two dollars. It was like two dollars more to rent it. I was like, fuck it, I'll yeah. buy it. And actually, that was a ballsy gamble, but it was a gamble that paid off because I actually enjoyed a quiet place too. But for the most part, I don't do that. I don't pay the twenty bucks to rent it. But for this, yeah, I'm going to do that. Yeah. <laughs> Sweet T sends in $10. Thank you very much, Sweet T. And says, for the channel, my friends, be safe, my friends, too. You, too, as well, Sweet T. The T is sweet tonight, ladies and gentlemen. The T is sweet. Loves, you, loves hearing you say that. <laughs> well, isn't Sweet T like a thing in the South or something? Yes, it is a Sweet T. It's a, it's a thing that I never, like, people, when I first came down here, they were like, well, you need to try Sweet tea. It's so good and grits. I was like, okay. You need uh, to try and, some Sweet tea and grits, man. And they told me grits is going to taste like cream of wheat. <laughs> they don't taste nothing like cream of wheat. And sweet tea is like, it's, I don't know how to describe it, but it's a very, it's got a very unique taste to it that mm. my taste just did not warm up to mm. at all. Is it, it is it a, a cold drink or a hot drink? It's, a, you, uh, I've, I've never seen it served hot, but I've seen it's, it's cold for the most part, I think. So I wonder if it's like iced tea, like iced tea up here in Canada has sugar in it. Iced tea in the States, at least where I, maybe it depends on the state, but I remember ordering an iced tea when I was in the States and it was like, had no sugar. And I was like, what the fuck is this? You know what I mean? It was weird. But anyway, uh, Nathan Hartswick sends in $5, says, D&T, what are your thoughts on the new James Wan movie, Malignant? Have you watched the trailer? I have watched the trailer, and I am planning on doing a McRae Live episode on my thoughts on it, but I, that got derailed from the Halloween Kills trailer and all the Halloween shit, and I just haven't had a chance to do that. Have you seen the new trailer for James Wan's Malignant? Is that the one where I might have, because I did see something here recently... Uh, where like they visualize and they see shit happening, like kind of like yes. uh, and yes. shit. Yes, yes. Yeah. yeah, I saw that. Um, I was like, okay, it's interesting. Um, you know, it, it piqued my interest enough to want to watch it. Here's uh, the thing for me. If James Wan's name was not attached to this movie, I'd have no interest. Yeah. It looks run of the mill. The trailer looks very now apparently it's an original idea something we haven't seen before i like that juan is attached he's proven himself with saw the conjuring insidious to be a very more than capable uh horror director uh with great horror sensibilities and remember when i say saw the conjuring and insidious i'm talking about their best movies the first saw the first conjuring the first insidious you know he didn't direct you know the larger sequels i mean we're not talking about the shitty conjuring th oh wait did i say that out loud yeah no i mean he's i mean he his he spawned three franchises for better or worse um you know, so 
I'm going to give them, I mean, looking at the trailer, I'm like, you know, there's some things in there that I'm like, oh, that's in, like, I like the concept. It's interesting. I saw a few one isms in there that I'm like, oh yeah, that looks like something James. I love, I, I really appreciate his take on modern horror. So I'm going to give him, I'm, I'm going to give him benefit of the doubt, but the trailer overall didn't, didn't peak me like his past movies tra trailers have. Yeah, um, I think it so we'll see. We'll see. But it's James Wan. It's another horror movie. He's back doing horror. Malignant. I'm in. Yeah. Let's see what happens. Me to at least go, yeah, I'll watch it. You know what I mean? It's 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 one of those. It's like I'm not like super excited for it like I am for like Maverick, Top Gun, or Halloween Kills, but it's a, like you said, it's a James Wan movie. I gotta give Wan the benefit of the doubt and check it out and hopefully yep. I'm out of there like I did with the conjuring. And like, yeah, this is fucking great. You know? Absolutely. Uh you wanna take this thing to eight thirty or that's fine. Go take another minutes. 10 minutes. All right. We'll take this thing to 830, folks. Um, okay. Let's see here. Uh, do, 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 do. Uh, oh, did I get that? I did. Nick sends in $5. Thank you, Nick. Says, Dave, have you seen the new director's cut of Little Shop of Horrors that now includes its original 20 minutes a plus fully restored wild ending? I have not. I have not. I haven't seen even, I haven't seen fuck that movie in years. Actually, I think I own that. And I own, the only copy of that I own is on VHS. I don't even own that digital. Is that the one with Rick Moranis? Uh, is he in that? No, that battery's not included. No, wait. No, no it is. No, you're right. You're right. It is. The, uh, it, you are right. It is the one with Rick Moranis. I yes. Think, yeah, yeah I, I've seen it, but not in a long time. Yeah, it wasn't one of those movies that I watched frequently, but I know I have it in my VHS collection somewhere yeah. in my box of VHSs that I don't watch anymore. Mm. Crazy. Crazy. Uh, all right. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Tony, you, uh, you you pick one there. Tony? All right. Uh, no Artisan. I have not seen Annihilation. But I know you keep asking me, and I appreciate you asking. Oh, Annihilation's a good movie. It's very cerebral, and, you know, you got to think, but it's it's good. I hate movies that make me think. <laughs> <laughs> well, then maybe you might not like Annihilation. I don't know. Uh, Nick sends in five dollars. Says Dave. Um, got any big plans for the upcoming McRae Live number two hundred? Uh, no, I don't actually. What if you know of H two O that I keep bugging him about? What if Donald Pleasant didn't die? Maybe what H two O? What we what what would have been the H two O? Yeah, I don't know. No, I I don't really. I I really haven't given it much thought to be honest with you. I uh, I don't. Uh, yeah, Chester, I knew. I know that all the Halloween soundtracks on CD are all remixed. Yes, that's what I was trying to explain before because I own this, all the, I own one, two, three, four, five, all on vinyl. The original pressing, how they were released back in the day, um, and when I listen to them digitally versus to what I have, it, I, I know they. I don't know why they do that, but they did. Mm -hmm. uh, just is what it is, and it sucks. The I digital. Gotcha. Digital version sucks. The analogs, if you can get a copy of the originals, that's the way to go. I agree. Uh, Lee Bauer says, hey, Dave, I'm keeping track on your on your poster. You should be getting it this Thursday. Uh, oh, the Halloween Kills poster. That's right. Yeah, Lee was uh, very kind enough to uh, shoot me up a Halloween Kills poster. Thank you very much, my man. So this Thursday, all right, well, uh, I'll check Wednesday as well because on Wednesday... Uh, I am planning on taking uh, the uh, first batch of perks that we're mailing out for the Indiegogo campaign. We, I have all the... Anybody who ordered a hoodie, a, a It's Me Billy hoodie on the uh, campaign, I'm taking your hoodie up to the uh, post office this Wednesday. Uh, so I'll, even though it says Thursday, I'll double check Wednesday and see if it's there too. So uh, we'll see. Yeah. Oh, that's a crazy question. Bishop Walters, Dave and Tony, what happens? If, what happens if China defeats North America in a war, or COVID kills most of us? Well, if it kills us, we're not going to be here to wonder what if we'll be dead. It's you know, gone. quite frankly, I'll be honest with you. I think the world needs to be wiped out. I think I think the world just. I think we need a good cleansing. The world needs to be wiped out. There's too many fucking idiots. There's too many people. That, the whole thing needs to be wiped out. I'm telling you, it needs to be wiped out. That's what we're going to do. We're going to wipe it out. 
No, but it, I mean, I'm so, I, I don't know. I mean, China, it's, it's all, God, it's all this, you know, if it's not Russia, it's China. If it's not China, it's Russia. If it's not either of them, it's Iran. If it's not them, it's Iraq. If it's not Iraq, it's like, oh, fuck, shut up. <laughs> How can you take any geopolitical situation seriously. We hate China, fuck China, don't like China, but we're going to get them to make our products. Okay, that's what we're going to do. You know, you got, I mean, I know Trump was very pro-American, but but I mean, there's there's so, like, you know, when you educate yourself, the, the hypocrisy of companies, uh, sorry, of governments, it's just so, like, do you honestly, I mean, it's just so silly. It's just so, like, we're so intertwined with each other, it's ridiculous. You know, like let's the the whole theater that they put out front, like oh, we don't like a damn China, out of fucking China, America's where it's at, in China. Let alone behind the scenes, they're like doing business and you know all this. I mean, it's just so it's so silly. You know, I'm just so tired of all the hypocrisy. If none of us paid attention to the media, I mean, none of us. If we didn't even like give them an ounce of of attention, we'd all get along just fine. I mean, we really fucking would. We everybody would get along just fine. It's we totally could coexist normally as people and not get like it's just so like for example i know people are gear or, you know are, are revving up wearing more masks uh, i'm not i'm just whatever at this point but there's a lot of people in my area it's like that it's like i'd say it's like 50 50 but everyone's and i get why you're doing it if you're doing it because you're worried about the delta force variant then that's your your whatever that's your deal yeah, i do whatever you got to do got to do to make your mindset psychologically feel better you know what i mean i just tune it out now. i don't listen to it i don't pay attention to it i don't watch it i don't give it an ounce more of time because it's unnecessary wasted energy on bullshit and we're fighting with each other over people who are idiots running this country i don't care what side of the fence you are it's idiots running fucking well, show like most people in government when you're talking about the geopolitical stage, not not municipal, not local, I'm you know I mean I'm talking about like the geopolitical level, like you know when you're talking about that kind of, they don't have your best interests in heart. They, they don't care. There's too much money and there's too much power. No, there's there's way too much money and way too much power that is flowing at that level. If you live in a town and you have, you know, a local mayor who promises you that he's going to do whatever, yeah, that he probably he or she probably will do that. Yeah, you know what I mean? Like there's 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 the local, there's the state or the provincial or whatever. I'm talking the geopolitical stage where it's just like, "Oh god, just shut up. We're not a fucking China. Shut the fuck up. I don't care. You're all in it together. You're all f It's like WWE Wrestling, right? They pretend to hate each other out on the stage, and then they're all fucking cutting deals and having lunch, you know, behind the curtain. So it's just, it's just nonsense. I mean, every single one of them, from Trump to Biden, to all, they're all fucking shady people in it for money and power. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. We sit here and fight over the dumbest shit, and I'm like, no more, no more. I'm yep, done. I'm agreed. Go do my thing, and I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna yeah, watch. Dunny, it. Dunny, 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 how Dunny. can you be done? Shut up, Trump. Dave, it's not that. Shut up, Trump. Dave, it's not. All right, I'll be quiet. Uh, Bobby <laughs> Hall says, Dave, what made you want to read the leaked script for Halloween Kills for seeing the movie? Um, yeah, some people have asked me that and says, you know, doesn't it spoil it for you? Well, I mean, it spoils it for me in the sense that I now know what's going to happen. But I think, uh, and I only speak for myself. I don't speak for anybody else. I only speak for myself. Um, I've always, for me, I think it's just the lens that I look at certain things through. And what is a spoiler for one isn't necessarily a spoiler for another. For me, spoilers are not just knowing what happens. To me, a spoiler is something fundamental that kind of changes uh, what you thought you knew or, you know, like, you know, no, I am your father. I mean, that's something that you probably wouldn't want to know. Um, but, you know, Michael kills a lot of people. Okay. You know what I mean? It doesn't, it's not, it, the, the, it just doesn't, I don't know. I can read something on a page, know exactly what's going to happen and still enjoy the journey of watching it play out on screen. Because when you read it on a page and seeing how it plays out on a screen can be very different. It's a very different experience. Um, very different. Uh, so it doesn't, I don't know if it's also because I'm a filmmaker and, and I, I look at, you know, it doesn't, I don't know. I just look at things differently. And Bruce told me that too. Now, I don't want to speak for Bruce completely, but I remember him Bruce. and I, yes, yeah, I remember, I remember him and I having this kind of a conversation and he was sort of in the same 
kind of ballpark. He was kind of like, yeah, no, it doesn't, uh, like it doesn't, you know, I can know that that happens and that happens and it doesn't really, I don't really fucking care. Um, but not everybody's like that, right? I mean, there's, it's a spectrum. There, you get guys like me and Bruce and then you get people sort of in the middle and then you get people on the other end of the spectrum that just knowing that Michael walks from A to B is a fucking spoiler. You know what I mean? Oh, what? He walks across the street. La, 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 la. And it's just like, you know, I mean, you get those people. Michael has black shoes. La, 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 la. You know, or, you know, whatever the case is, right? So, yeah, it's, yeah. A, it's a I, spectrum. I, I think the older that I've become, I've gone more back to what I used to, to do, which is not know about, you know, I want to know as little yeah. as possible to going in. Pretend it's like the 80s. Yeah. Well, and like you said, to, uh, what a spoiler is to you is going to be different to me. You know what I mean? Like that's everybody. It. And for me, I just stay away from it. I stay away from what I know. Like, and that's why I asked Dave ahead of time on that question. Like, is this, is this question? Because I don't want to know what happens in Halloween Kills. I haven't seen the trailer. I haven't watched any videos or stories or whatever. All I've seen is the teaser trailer and that's it. The only thing I may do uh, if they do release ahead of time, which I'm hoping they do, because I know Carpenter is set to score it again. Correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah, that. well, the, the the soundtrack did leak the other day. Yeah, I haven't listened to that. I want to listen to how it's supposed to sound. Yeah. I don't want to listen to crappy audio. Like, I want to hear what he does. So if that comes out early, which is what I'm hoping for, then I will definitely listen to no, that. No, it, it, it leaked. It was actually great quality. Like, it was a full-on leak. Um, okay. and, uh, it was taken down. You oh, might still be able to find it online. So steer away from that for sure. Has they, have they talked about a release date on that, on the soundtrack? Or no? I think they were thinking, uh, like in October. So if it, if it is October, it leaked, uh, way ahead of time, way ahead of time. I mean, we're almost there. We're two months away. From yeah, this. we're almost there. We're almost there. But I find uh, it like with, even like with, um, watching, um, I'll use the two new releases that I just watched here. One was um, The Wrath of Man with, uh, that was Guy Ritchie and Jason Statham. And then um, um, The Quiet Place Part 2. I didn't really watch the trailers for those films. I mean, I seen them, but I didn't like sit there and, you know, go on and, you know, look up shit. And I enjoyed watching those movies. Right. Uh, you know what I mean? And I think I'm becoming more and more pull back. You know, don't watch a lot of these videos anymore. Don't yeah. watch these movie shows anymore that are talking about the new movies because I don't want to know. I just want to go in and enjoy the film. And then I'll decide for myself after I see it, whether I like it or not. And if I want to share it publicly with people, then that's up to me. Um, if I don't, then, you know, whatever, you know, like I, I think people now are very aware that I absolutely despise the conjuring three. Uh, A lot of people do. I still haven't seen it. I'm hey, waiting for it to come yeah. to like, I, I'm waiting for it to come to Netflix or whatever for free. I'm not going to pay for it. You need to wait for it to come to VHS. Um, yeah, I'm waiting for it to come to Laserdisc. I just, that's what I'm waiting for. Yeah, 100%. Uh, it just, uh, you know, but um, yeah, I just, uh, but anyways, like you said, dude, I, I agree with your statement about uh, spoiling. I don't think, uh, I don't think you reading the script is going to spoil anything because I know I know how your mind thinks without you saying it. It's weird that we've never met each other face to face, but like yeah. I kind of I get you and I know why you did that. Yeah. Not in a bad way. I just I, I and for you, I know that's not spoiling it because you, your your eyes, your goggles are different than like if I were to read it, I'd be like, "Fuck! Why am I doing this to myself?" Yeah, you know? yeah. Well, I, and a lot of people would. And 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 listen, I'm not saying that there aren't filmmakers out there that that are on the other side of the fence too that wouldn't want to read it I, I it's just it's just how i've always been um it's just i i look at it from a filmmaking perspective and i'll look at it and go oh that's a good shot yeah that'd be a good shot or gee you know i wonder if they're going to use a dana dolly that or a jib and some track or you know maybe they're gonna you know i like i doesn't i'm i'm looking at it almost like it's it's a script that was filming yeah, exactly. It, 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 like I'm reading it. I mean, yes, I am reading it as a fan. There's that side to me. I mean, I can watch a movie as a fan. You know, I'm not one of those people that you can't take to the movie theater because I'm like, well, that doesn't make any sense. No, I'm not one of those people. I mean, I can check out, enjoy the movie as well. But there's always that internal sort of thing that's running and that I that is, you know, and, and I think most filmmakers are like that. Or if you've, you know, been in the business a while or, or, or if you're passionate about making movies or you're a film student or you know whatever if you're if you're really into film and filmmaking and whatever level you're at uh you'll probably be able to relate to what i'm talking about and when so i read the kills 
script, I mean, yes, I was spoiling it for myself, but uh, but I was reading it, going, "Oh, that's that's fascinating. I wonder if they're gonna. Oh, that's cool. Oh, let's see this. Oh, oh, cool, cool, cool. Yeah. Oh, I wonder if they're gonna. No. I, I don't know. It just doesn't. It doesn't spoil anything. And and then I'm like, oh, great. I'm 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 excited to see this. <laughs> you know, it's just uh, it's just one of those things. But everybody's different. Everybody is different, for sure, for sure. Um, everybody is different. Hey, what did you think of, by the way, because I didn't catch your video. I know you talked about it. Um, what did you think of Ghostbusters, the trailer? I liked it. I, I, I watched it yesterday. I, I finally I, I caught it, uh, the full trail, the new er, trailer, I should say. Well, had- I thought it was I thought it was great. And uh, I can tell you, I know, I, I, I don't know as much about Ghostbusters Afterlife as I do Halloween Kills, but I know a little about Ghostbusters Afterlife because of a certain contact I have. Um, and uh, they've already seen it because it's been locked and loaded for fucking like a year. Um, it's been ready to go since last year. Um, and all I will say is that it's, it's, uh, if you are a big fan of the original, this, this should, uh, well, I, I, I loved the trailer. I thought it was great. Um, mm-hmm. and, but the movie hasn't shown you, or the trailer hasn't shown you everything yet. Let's just put it that way. Um, I think it's going to get some people excited. I was, I was pleasantly like, this is OG vibes. Like I'm getting original oh, yeah. vibes. And, and f- like, um, the little bit that I know, the little bit that, and again, I don't know a lot. There's just certain little things that I, that I was told that, that very minor s- surface level uh, on purpose that I was like, Oh, uh, uh, fans are going to be happy. Yeah. Like, I mean, yeah, I didn't see the guys, obviously. I mean, obviously at the end there, you know, that's Dan Aykroyd, mm-hmm. uh, which is cool, you know, um, yeah. but yeah, the guys are in I, it, but that's not a spoiler. The adventures with the kids too. Like, you know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. I, like, I'm like, this looks actually good you know what i mean like the first trailer i was like meh like i was getting i think i was getting stranger things vibes because mm-hmm. of the kid stranger things but now we're so fucking far removed from the last season of stranger things that, true. like i keep forgetting that there's a fourth one that's supposed to come out but because of covid and shit yeah. um it got set back and it's been like these kids are going to be in their fucking 30s by the time they finish this fucking oh yeah yep. period, man. yeah period um, and i know this this one now and i think it's because of that i think there's been such a long gap from the last stranger things um season that right. when i watched it i was like man this looks really good and i'm very intrigued by the girl who obviously is uh egon's kid um you, you, egon's I granddaughter know. i'm sorry I'm, the daughter is the one who has the house the granddaughter is, seems like the is the focal point and did you story. notice that the older lady that was talking there was janine yes now like, any pots is that janine like is that janine, is that her mom like is Janine and Egon hook up like we all thought they would. I don't. I don't think so. I don't okay. know. I, I don't know. But um, uh, I know they had a, a e, or not uh, Egon, a Janine and um, an Egon. Yeah. Well, Rick Moranis's character didn't they have a quick thing? Brief. Uh, well, n- oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, in the first movie, Janine was very much into Egon. In the second movie, sure. it was very much Rick Moranis. Um, I don't know. I, I don't know what the uh, all will be. I'm just being told that all will be addressed. Janine with Egon, and then obviously Bankman with. Um, oh crap! What was Sigourney? Yes, Sigourney, Sigourney Weaver. Yeah. But but the the thing is is that uh, there's a line in the trailer where. Uh, Janine said something about uh, taking care of him. So maybe he was sick and her character was taking care of him, whatever. But doesn't Annie Potts look beautiful? Oh my God, she looks yeah. stunning. I mean, she she looks fantastic. I mean, she's got to be in her 60s at least. And she, Wait, looks- she, she looks like she's barely aged since the last one. I know, <laughs> she looks amazing. She looks good. So good, so good. So it was really great to see her. Um, and, uh, but there's a, yeah, there's a, I'm I'm told that it's a it's a it's a love letter. So uh that should excite fans. That should excite fans. Um so it'll be fun. It'll be fun for sure. Um all right folks, listen, that is going to do it for Tony Michael and I here on episode 120 of uh, Two Dudes and Some Bullshit. Thanks to our amazing moderators, Frank Riker, Tabitha Short, Darren Sands, and Chris Faber for doing what you guys do. We really appreciate it. Thank you to all the Super Chat questions that came in today, the non-Super Chat questions. This was a fun ride. Comment below if you're watching after the fact and let me know your thoughts on Jason Goes to Hell the final Friday. Tony and I would love to know. Also, tomorrow... There will be no McRae Live tomorrow. No McRae Live tomorrow. Just letting you guys know that. I should be back on Thursday. Just letting you know. Uh, Tony, any last things you want to say? No, this was fun. Um, yeah, I mean, get it. It's done. It's in the bank. I'm 
you ever again. Uh, oh, you're breaking up there. I could hardly hear you. Are you still there? I'm here. Can you hear me now? There you can go. You yeah. Now? now I can hear you. Now I can hear you. Now, now you're there. I was just saying, no, I mean, this was fun. Uh, good stream, good show, good shit. Um, I'm glad done over and out. Oh, you're breaking up. You're breaking up again. I wonder if it's the... I don't know why you're breaking up. Weird. You sound like, you sound like you're breaking up. Anyway, we're done the fucking show. <laughs> All right. Have a good night, folks. Good night. We'll see you later. In the meantime, in the between time. Cheers. <laughs>